So, it's the 21st day of chess, 1640 DR. Oh. Yeah. So, it's only been a couple of days since the invasion, actually. It's pretty okay. crazy. Yeah, this is like the most amount of stuff you've done in such a short time. Yeah, but don't worry, you'll be getting a lot of downtime after this because you're gonna do a lot of traveling and yeah. we'll resolve that at a later time. Uh, unless there are some stuff that you are expecting to get right away, then we can start resolving that right away. But for the others who can delay on that, let's just continue the session. So, okay. Um, Rico, you gained allies. You now have Cephalosk and three other Illithids who are allies to the Red Knight and your allies with them in turn. You promised them that you'd be buying four... Uh, what do you call this? Four hats of disguises. Four hats of disguises, yeah. yeah. And that you would connect them to somebody who's knowledgeable about them. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, I think you would have told them that you think it's a bad idea for them to talk to Larlock. So yeah. instead, you suggest the Archlich Lady Sarah Saharel, somewhere yeah. in the Anarok Desert. Yes. Yeah. You're not really sure where though, so um, it's at this point that you might want to ask the gods for help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in your case, Dante, um, I know you had a plan of, like, you know, not not privy to anyone else, but you had a plan of talking to Larlock. Yeah. And, yeah, like, at this point, you might want to roleplay, like, you know, getting to that point. Or you can ignore it. It's up to you. But what you understand is that Rico is telling them right now, I don't think it's a good idea to go to Larlock. You should go to this Lady Saharel in the Anarok Desert. Before we go to the lineage. Anarok Desert, would there have been, like, enough downtime for Dante to go uh, see Larlock? On your own? Yeah. If you ask the others to wait for you, I think it's possible. Because I don't know when they plan on going to the Anarok. They might want to do other things in the meantime. Um, They don't have to wait for Dante. They can like meet at a rendezvous point uh, like before they cross the Anarok Desert. Sure. Okay. No problem. Yeah. So uh, that. Yeah, if we, if you don't wanna, like, roleplay this, uh, an interaction with Dante and Larlock today, it's okay, so we can just skip that part, or maybe you and I, Link, can have a, a quick session about it later. Hmm. What do you think? Because you're going on your own, no? and I'm guessing there are some things you don't want the other players privy to. I'm I'm okay if they know, man. <laughs> Just like in game, uh, they their characters wouldn't know. Okay. Mm. But then it just might take time. See. Okay, I mean I understand, but let's ask the others. So, first off, Dante, would you have let everyone know that you're going to Larlock, the Shadow King? Hmm. That's an interesting point, because Fatal might be interested. It's like, it's a fucking lich. Uh, sure. Yeah, um... What? Wait, I don't know anything about a lich, right? I didn't know this guy <laughs> talked about lich. Oh, no, no, no. In the previous session, he basically was saying... Or not he, but like... The Illithid, whose name is Cephalosk, he asked if anybody knows anything about the Lich, or Lichdom, and Rico yeah. said he knows the Shadow King, so I think you would have overheard that conversation. Oh dang, do I know anything about Shadow King? Did they ever tell me about that, the Shadow King story or not? That's a question. It's kind of well um, known in Faerun, so... I mean, no, no, like, did I... Yeah, that's the thing, I might have known the Shadow King, but did I... Did you guys tell me your interaction with him? Dante, yeah, that's Dante I would, like, yeah. Okay. Rico would um, have, but Dante would not have. 
Okay. Yeah, so Rico have told me. Yeah. So first of all, what is the stand of the Order of the Gauntlet against the Shadow King? They don't really have a stance on him per se. Because like, for the most part, you don't really hear his name dropped in your org. There are more, there's bigger fish to fry, like the Demon Princess and the Lords of the Nine Hells and that sort of thing. Uh, Larilok, the Shadow King, you may have heard his name like once or twice, but then not much was said about him and not many missions revolve around him as far as your faction is concerned. Okay, so we're indifferent. You're kind of indifferent, yeah. Okay, well, I guess I'll be indifferent about it. Oh, okay. There you go. That's just... I just... I just... Eh, yeah, you know what? I'll be indifferent about it. I kind of, like, think that maybe not, in a way, but that means, like, I'll have to kill these guys, but I, I, I think it's fine. I'll just be indifferent <laughs> about it. <laughs> my faction... If my, my faction's indifferent about a Shadow King, because it's not a big deal, then I'll be indifferent about it. <laughs> Dude, you'll have to kill these guys just because they're acquainted with the lich. Well, yeah, as That's you said, we're, 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 we're indifferent, and I'm not a paladin of light, so... Ah, yeah, if you're a paladin, yeah. that might be different. Unless, unless this guy, like, legit kills people on a daily basis. Does he? He does not. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, no one can say for sure his activities are okay, well, unless, to to everyone. Unless that's proven a fact. Then he needs justice <laughs> through justice. through lightning. But at this point, like you know, unless also um Tala, I mean not Tala, I mean unless Tear tells me there's something wrong with this dude, then I'll probably go do it. But if he doesn't, and he doesn't require like you know any anything with me, so I'll be indifferent to him, and I'll be like, eh, go ahead. Yeah, as far as you know, like your God hasn't really said anything about this guy. Yeah, and that. And also the fact that I don't know if he's killing people on a daily basis just makes me think that, yeah, you know what? It's fine. As long as we don't discover that fact, then probably I'll have to kill him or kill you guys if you continue working with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's that. But yep. The question now is, do you want to go with Dante to meet up with Larlock? Yes, the same Shadow... question for everyone. Because Shadow okay. King sounds cool. I wish that was my name. <laughs> like, first name Shadow, last name King. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? But yeah, I do want to go there. That's actually an interesting place to go. Okay. There you go. Um, how about Fenrir? Do you want to meet up with Larlock? Um, I'd be fine with it. Because again, Twilight Shadow <laughs> sounds pretty close to me. <laughs> sounds pretty close to me. <laughs> okay, sure, sure, sure. So you'll head there. I guess the only person not going there is Rico and the Illithids. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In the meantime, then, I guess you would be... Oh, maybe I could maybe I could strike a deal with him and get me an amulet of help from him. That's very maybe. possible. <laughs> right? That's very possible. I have 2,700 gold, you know. Like, it's like, have you guys, have you guys seen Pawn Stars? Like, he like ah. walks in, they're like, I'm here to sell an, an, an amulet yeah. of freaking help, and it's like, I'm selling for 3,700 3, gold, and I'm just like, I'll give you two, I'll, I'll give you 20 gold for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all I can give you, man, I'm taking all the risk. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, I'm yeah, we'll see. All the risk. Uh, we'll see, know. we'll see. This we'll wasn't see. supposed to be an episode of Pawn Stars, man. Come on. Yeah, I just, I just, I just say, man. It'd be funny, though. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I guess it's just, I, I don't think you'll talk to him. All right. So there's that. And then, Rico, I guess in the meantime, you can be fixing up your keep. Because it hasn't yeah. been that many days, actually, since the invasion. Yeah, I will help them. Uh, I help the people rebuild the keep. So we still have a base to sleep in. <laughs> Oh yeah, Dante, since we are, we do know that we're going to the Shadow King, I might have whispered to you that I'm interested in getting, like, your amulet. Something like that, so maybe you could, like, you could hook me up, you know? <laughs> know what I mean? But that's up to you, because it's your character, but I would have told you, Fato would have told you. Yeah. That, yeah, the, the amulet, yeah, da I might be interested in it. Yeah, Dante will just express, I do know that the Shadow King holds many valued treasures and magic items. Whether or not you can acquire one for yourself, that'll be between you and him. 
You see, you see, Dante, what I'm trying to tell you is if you can hook me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's your, you're close to this guy. <laughs> uh, I, I understand your association, but believe me, my relationship with the Shadow King is far more complicated than you might think. I'm not oh. quite sure if I will be able to hook you up. <laughs> oh, it's just like I just mother. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know it's that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Rest assured, I'll be there with you, friend. I appreciate that. All right. Well, that I didn't know it's that complicated shit. <laughs> oh yeah, it's pretty complicated. If you were there, <laughs> you'd be like, dang. <laughs> All right. Um, and Fenrir, I guess Fenrir is just along for the ride, but yeah. anything? Okay, got it. So, so we'll Rico. see, yeah, we'll see Rico and the, uh, the Illicids, like, at a rendezvous point before we cross the Anorak Desert. Yeah. Yeah, you okay. can do that, because there are several ways that you can get to the Anorak Desert. You can... Mm. Okay, so this is the point where I should share the map. The map. Here's the Forgotten Realms map. Um, the map. And I'll also stream for the others if, like, streaming would be better. Streaming. And streaming. Just stream so, it. So, just stream it. So, Baldur's Gate is somewhere here, and your Citadel is somewhere here. Right? Yeah. And then that is where the Anarok Desert is. So that's an extremely long line. And um, the ballpark estimate of how long that'll take is it's almost 1,200 kilometers away or 720 miles away. If you ride by dragon, it will still take you three days at least to get there. Okay. But, you know, you don't have a you don't have a dragon or a griffin to ride on, so you're yeah. gonna have to. At best, you're gonna have to use like a horse for that. Um, yeah. DM. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I have that spell prepared, but I'm sure we can. We can. We don't have to. Cause Dante has teleportation c circle, so. Uh, yeah, so about that. So remember in the beginning at session zero, I said there are new places with permanent portals. Yeah. The, the closest one to the Anaurok Desert that you know about is somewhere here in Mithdranor. Mithdranor. Yeah. Uh, hang on, let me s check your live. You are, uh. you are pointing... Where are you pointing? It's well, out. it's it's right about half. Ah, uh, there. <laughs> yeah, it's right about half, actually. That's crazy. Draenor to the Anaurok. So instead of 720 miles, it becomes a 462-mile journey. Mm. Work. Which... Work. Yeah, it's pretty worth. Like, not gonna yeah. lie. You, you cut down your trip by almost a half. Yeah. So, can just, yo, can we just grab or something? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, fucking grab here? Unfortunately, no grab service yet. But you can be the first to, you know, oh, to patent that business. Fatal if we grab. had, if we had plane shift, we could have just jumped from one plane and then returned to the material plane in another plane. <laughs> That's also another possible route if someone had plane shift or no. No, we're not. We're not there yet. We don't have that level. But yeah, uh, Dante will suggest that. Uh, so in the days that the party will be separated, uh, we'll decide a point where we can meet. Uh, that's safe or what, whatever, and then he can teleport everyone to Myth Jan or Myth Jan yeah. or. So it can be wherever you want, but you also know that Baldur's Gate has a portal, like permanent portal yeah. somewhere in there. Mm. Yeah. 
So in either case, either Rico can go there directly and teleport there, because like there's teleportation gate there, and then on your end, maybe you can also just teleport there directly. Yeah, from yeah. Warlock script. <laughs> Yeah, directly from Warlock script. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, in either case, that's what you can do. You can meet up somewhere and port together, or you can, you know, go there your own separate ways and meet up somewhere in Myth Draenor. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we can just meet uh, Myth Draenor. Yeah, let's do that. Great. That's the plan, right. Stan. That's the plan, Stan. Okay. <laughs> so... Oh, Rafi left. What up, man? Hey, Raf. Okay, he's back. Oh. Yeah, Raf. Hey. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, so I guess let's do the part where all of the players are more or less there first. Yeah, let's go yeah. to Warlock's Crypt and see an old friend. Alright, so Dante, you arrive back in Warlock's Crypt. Um, and it's been a while since you've been here. It's been a year already. Yeah. And you kind of remember the last time that you got the Larlock. He kind of just... Actually, wait, what happened? He just asked you to be somewhere, and then after that, you teleported there, no? Uh... I think that's what happened. I broke up with him. <laughs> <laughs> Is what happened. <laughs> wait. No, 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 that happened in Darkhold, but the last time you were here, I think... Oh, the last time in the crypt. Yeah, in the crypt. I don't the last remember. last time you were here... The last time you were here, I think that's what happened. Like, he asked you to go to this spot. So you just kind of, like, went to the same spot. Just kind of, like, thinking that this is how it's always been. Hmm. Since you're not telepathically bonded anymore, or pack, like you're not bonded through a warlock pact, you can just like send a message to him with sending. Uh, do I even have sending? I don't think Dante has sending. Oh shit, you don't have sending. Uh, message? <laughs> <laughs> I can't because I need to see him. Uh, no, I'll just go to the same spot and then. Uh, Dante will just speak out, Larlock, if you can hear me. I bid thee, let us enter. Okay, and then he'll telepathically say, <laughs> well, not telepathically, but this is sending. You're kind of familiar with the feeling, because mm. you've been sended a lot before. So he says, ah. It's you again, Dante. What brings you to my lair? Remember that in our previous conversation, the last one that we had, you spoke of another marrow. I'm here to inquire more about that. Then a portal after like after saying that a portal starts to appear for the four of you or no sorry the three of you to enter through so yeah do you want to enter the three of you yeah dante looks at the uh, the battle bros and then he steps in wait 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 do you have a habit of entering random portals dante <laughs> Cause I didn't hear them talk. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know, like, I know. He's just random talk. shit, right? <laughs> uh, Dante will say, "We'll, we'll, we'll have an answer, and then he'll think about it." You know what? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I do. <laughs> and then he steps in. Henry <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like shrugs. Yeah, I just shrug, and then okay, <laughs> and then he goes in. <laughs> Walk it. <laughs> For the battle bros, like, I've seen weirder things happen. I saw a thing eat brains. Like, there's nothing to me now. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, okay. So, 
You're in a dark place. It looks like the inside of a cave. And um, not that you see too familiar. I cast faces. light on my shield. Well, I don't need to. I actually have dark vision. I keep forgetting I'm a half elf. I have dark vision. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I mean, everything still looks like in shades of gray, though, because it's really dark in here. Cool, cool. I still do yeah. the light thing, though. Mm. Okay, so you do light. Not I'm not shield. See, not they can see the two familiar faces again. Uh, Taki looks like he's been. He looks happier now, like he's <laughs> smiling and shit. And oh, does it look he looks... human? Does it look human or something? How does it look like? Uh, okay, so the two people that Fatal and Fenrir see, one is a dark-skinned elf. Yeah. And yeah, he's wearing a turban. He's got red eyes and I think a mustache, right? Yeah, yeah okay. I'll, I'll send a picture. <laughs> yeah, send a picture. <laughs> Um, he looks stepped out right now, like he's recently gotten some really good drip and some cool items. Cool. <laughs> yeah, looks like he <laughs> he earned like a cloak of displacement for his loyal service. Ooh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then, let's see, so that's the bodyguard of mm. the other guy who is the Shadow King. Let me see if I can find a picture of him. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Larlock the Shadow King. Larlock. Yeah, copy. He's a skinny, skinny looking dude. Yeah, it's a very skinny looking dude. Oh, okay, you found it. Thanks, my dude. <laughs> See, he's pretty skinny. He's pretty skinny. <laughs> so, there you go. And as you can see, he does have several... Thanks, thanks. He has several stone? stones flying <laughs> above his head. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not a... yeah, dude. He's got several stones flying on his head. And um, in the picture, it shows that he still has flush, but then he's just all bones now at this point. Okay, creepy. <laughs> yeah. And then he says, Welcome to my lair. And I see that you've brought guests. I am on defense mode, dude. And a dead target to be like that. Defense mode. Defense Sounds like he want. <laughs> Sounds like he wanted to eat me. <laughs> and then he says, Oh you, relax. I am not here to take your souls today. No, -uh, I relax you right now. <laughs> Dante will will step forth and then will like bow his head a little bit. Um, I would say it would it would it's nice to see you again, Larlock. But I truly I do not feel that way. <laughs> um, these are my th uh, these are new companions of ours. I'm not sure if I n need to introduce them for. I know you like to keep your nose in things, but for um, <laughs> for politeness, uh, this is Fenrir and this is Fatal. Ah yes, a follower of Tear and a follower of Saloon. Hello there. I do not. I do not respond back. Fuck that dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dante looks at the, the two of them and then says, This is the Shadow King Larlock, and this is Takid. I thought you'd have more flush in you. Wait, what? <laughs> I, thought, you... I thought you'd have more flesh in you. Oh, uh, and he says, Ah, yes. Time tends to do that to a body. But it's okay. I didn't need it anymore anyway. Right. Well, I like to keep my flesh where they where they stay. If you uh, don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just kind of chuckles and says, "Cautious one, you sure know how to pick people just like yourself, Dante." Well then, 
You said that you came here to talk about that conversation I promised before. Where would you like to start, Dante? Arturo Maro was a member of the Harpers, and he was a decorated one for a long time until suddenly he disappeared. You can start there. Well, what else is there to say? I think you know the story already, that the Maro family how home was invaded by demons, and that your master appeared to save you. And then after that, the whereabouts of Maro, nobody knows. If you have nothing more to offer than that, I think we've wasted our journey here. Well, you haven't asked the question yet, Dante. What Where exactly is he now? do you want to know? Where is he now? Okay. Then he says, Well, you see, the thing that most people don't know is that he was trying to go to the Shadowfell and deal with the demons that his family were coerced with. And where do you think demons reside, Dante? In the Abyss. That would be what normal people would say, yes. That is usually where they are. That is usually where they are born. But where else do demons reside, Dante? Does Dante actually know this? Uh, Wayne doesn't know. Is it the shadow of <laughs> Um, They kind of reside in all sorts of places, but like, there's the shadow fell, there's um... Jehena, that's another place. Mm -hmm. Jehena. Let me see if I can spell it. Jehena. It sounds like a, it sounds like trivia night. Trivia night. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really acting. trivia night with Larla. <laughs> right? It's just like yeah, it's like how to be a billionaire, and then you have like <laughs> Larry. You guys are like the contestants, you know, and the right? host. Yeah. yeah. That, that is like can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he eventually says, There are many places that demons may reside. But one thing's for certain, Dante. That demon that invaded your home that day, it was not in any of the normal places that demons reside. That one originated from the Shadow Fell. Hmm. You're saying that Arturo is there? Yes, most likely he is there. I have not gone to investigate myself. However, it does coincide with what the reports are going around here and there. That his activities are shrouded in mystery and that no one has seen him. Well, no one knows the shadow fell very well. All except me and the denizens of the shadow fell. Should we choose to visit the shadow fell? How would we go about it? Well, I'm sure you're familiar with a spell that you've been encountering very often. Which is <laughs> Henry just says that. But yeah. does he, and I just I just kinda of whispered Dali, does he ask questions a lot or does he answer <laughs> some points? <laughs> uh I mean Fatal, you kind of know that liches don't really divulge information freely. There's oh, always okay. okay. Yeah. There's always But know, I've never encountered strange. one though. I've never encountered one, so that's why I end up saying that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you've been in the Order for a while, and you hear stories about other people dealing with liches. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Still, I still said it, though. 
I'm sure. And then he says, Oh, oh dear. Well, then maybe you don't have a way of entering. Well, that's too bad. You speak of... Blink? Of course not, Dante. I'm sure you're familiar with how Blink works. It only brings you to one plane and one plane only. The ethereal not plane. Not for very long. Indeed. You'll need a far more powerful spell if you want to go in and out. However, there is another way. And then he says, but I will only tell you this if you do something for me. Or if you give me something that I desire. What is that this time? And then he says, I am aware that Eco Bishop has been looking for a Netheris artifact. Bring me a shard of that, and then I will let you know. What will you use On it the for? Other? Well, a Mythalar can be used for many things. I simply want to keep one, because I know that others are hunting for it as well. I do not want to be the only one who does not have a Mithalar shard. So, I will ask you to do it, for I know that I can rely on you to get a job done. You want one so you won't feel left out? Well, those are one of the reasons. Listen, Larlock, Dante steps forward a bit. <clears throat> Right. It, is, it is no question that you are a powerful being. If I help you this this time and gift you this Mithalar shard, how will I know you will not use it against the world, against the other gods? And then he kind of like laughs a bit. And then he says, Oh Dante, if I wanted to rule the world, we wouldn't even be talking right now. I don't but... know that. You have your ways, your sick and elaborate plans. This might be part of it. Perhaps. But you know, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. In any case, I don't need you to do this. If you don't want to do this, then I will find another way. There are always other ways. Mm. Dante turns turns around. I whisper. Yeah, okay. I, and I whis whisper to Dante that Dante don't do it. I know that Tate because I, I, I have a feeling that this is really important to him and he might end up just like, yeah, let's just go for it. <laughs> so I said, like, Dante, don't do it. Yeah, uh, Dante. Lilac says, okay. Lilac says, I like this one. He's very cautious. Uh, af after turning around, um, he looks back at Larlock and then he says, um, one more thing. There is another. There is another member in um, the in the Harpers. Uh, he goes by the moniker of N. Goes by the moniker N. Okay. Are you familiar uh, with this person? So surprisingly, Larlock is not familiar with that person. So he says N. Well, the only thing I know is that he was involved with that incident of your home. But after that, not much has been heard about that person. Involved how? Then he kind of chuckles, oh, you didn't know? 
I think that that was part of your briefing some days ago. This was it? N person. Yeah, it was, it was. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. That, yeah, that N is the one who reported about the Maro home, and that's how he became a high heart. Ah, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so he says, I'm sure you're familiar with him in that regard, but his activities as of late eludes even myself. Curious. Indeed. If you want to know more about that one, I think you're going to have to seek out Maro yourself, for they are invariably intertwined. And then Dante, Dante begins to leave, but as he walks away, uh, he he stops for a bit, and then uh, he says one more time, Oh, I almost forgot. And then turns around. We are to seek out this Lady Saharel. Do you know of them? And then he kind of like... Uh, he smiles because he says, Ah, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. If ever you see her in the Anal Rock Desert, tell her Larlock sends his regards. Where in the desert might we find her? Most likely in the heart of the desert where Netheril fell. She used to be a keeper of one of the cities there, you know. Hmm. Uh, I must see her again someday. Is she dangerous? He says, Well, dangerous to some, not dangerous to others, I would say. Depends on where you fall. Mm. And one last thing. If ever we do decide to gift you this Mithalar shard, will you also gift my friends amulets of health? Good chuckle. And then, yeah. No boy, Dante. He says, "Well, I can gift more than that." Oh, okay, cool. Wait, wait, hold up. Why do you need to give him the Mithalar shard again? Let me, let me remember that part. He just uh, wants, he wants it. To be he just wants it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, why, why do we want, why do we want to give it to him? Like, what, what was the exchange, Dante? The exchange was like uh, oh, wow. to figure out another way to get into the shadow, the shadow fell fell. without requiring a high level spell. Okay, okay, okay. I have a plan. Wait, give me a second. Okay. So okay. hold up, Dante. So I see that Dante really wants it just from asking that part, and I saw that, and I'm just like, I look at my mace. Knowingly that my mate is a really like you know powerful weapon as well. Yeah. So and then I look at the lich. Lich, will this be something that you're interested in? And I show him my mace of lightning, of thunder and lightning. Oh shit. Okay. And then he says, Ah, that that. Do you weird. have this in your collection? From from what it looks like, you don't. I mean, you, you can't tell. You don't see any color. Well, yeah, that's, that, that's why I did say from so far you don't. Because also, like, what I know, this is, like, one-of-a-kind weapon. Yeah, and then he says, You're right to assume that, little one. I do I'm... not have that in my collection yet. And I say, no, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of making deals with liches, but seems like my friend really wants to know that. How about you take this for collateral? If we die in our trip back there, wherever we're going, you got to keep it. Then he says, and why would I need collateral like that? Well, the thing is that maybe we can get the information now. He says, 
Oh no, no, little one. Information like this is priceless. And yet you uh, have your, up. and yet you have your price. Indeed, I do, and I have named it. Uh, Dante just like we really want that thing. <laughs> they don't want this. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Dante <laughs> like Dante. He says though. He says though. However, I will accept having that permanently, and then I can divulge your information that you seek. Oh, okay, okay, hold up, hold up. So, we don't know much about a shard. Let's think about this, Dante. And I look yeah. at you and I'm just like... <laughs> no, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We don't, Dante... we, we don't know about a shard. I know what this thing can do is... It's actually pretty tame if you think about it. I don't really rely on it that much, but... It's cool to have. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, Dante, like, just uh, lowers Fatal's hand with the mace and then it says... I appreciate the gesture, friend, but uh, this is not something I need to do right now. We can okay, take some I nod. time. I nod. We'll be back, Lich. One way or another. We start walking away and then, and then Dante will say, uh, I appreciate your... Mm, cooperation this time, Larlock. And then Dante bows his head politely. Yeah, and then he says, Very well. After all, I'm in a good mood today. Many good things are happening in Faerun. And Fenrir just says, Well, if we do end up helping Dante with this, I expect compensation. And he laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> <laughs> Who are you saying that to? I'm wondering. Are you saying that to the lich? To the lich. Yes. <laughs> He's. Uh, I say. I, I basically said. I'll take your word for it. You said. <laughs> you, you're gonna make it worth my while. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, he did, he did say he wants the reward more than that. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why he said like. Indeed, I will reward you handsomely for bringing me a Mithalar shard. You won't even have to part with your little mace toy. And that part scares me the most. Because that's, <laughs> that's how much it, it's worth, the shard itself. And it does not sit well with me, knowing that he wants something like that. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'd rather give him the mace and the shark, just saying. Yeah. And I would have told Dante this. Also, I would have said, Dante, you talk a lot about shark birds. <laughs> talk a what? You talk, you talk a, lot a lot about the harpers. Right. Yeah, that's the first time we really hear him talk about the yeah. like that. Right. Do you have family members of party harpers? I do. Interesting. Anyway, I really do not want him to give him the shard and if you really want that information and look at my mace i'm willing to give this one instead if you want something that badly a lich like that it's not gonna go too well and he did say he's willing to accept this instead of that one for the information we'll give it a few more days to think about and i'll do more research um, the important thing is, I know where my grandfather is. Oh. Well, I give you more reason why. I want to give this instead! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and then, uh, Larla kind of interjects and says, Well, he did not have to do anything, Dante. That information was a gift. A gift for being with me, even for a little while. Um, I do hope, however, that we can further our relationship in the future. As long as you don't use your powers to destroy the world, uh, I can see that happening as well. Indeed. In that case, in that invariably, we are going to be interacting more often in the future. 
And Dante starts walking away. <laughs> and as usual, Fenrir, Fenrir just shrugs. <laughs> yeah, just, just shrugs and goes away. And then I give the Lich one final stare. And then turn around. <laughs> And then he kind of like waves goodbye to all of you. Ask yeah. you. Um, yeah. Uh, Fenrir, as he... like... <laughs> Fenrir, I think you and Takid though, you're like kind of uh, in the background, kind of like shrugging and looking at each other, comparing biceps. And right? <laughs> they're, they're, weighing, they're weighing each other out, you know? Yeah, <laughs> they're weighing each other Takid. out. Takid has a new rival now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I have set my sights on another target. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. It will be fun. They're both fighters. That's why it's so funny. Yeah. Right? That'll be yeah. fun. I, I hope we see them fight at some point. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so that was that interaction. I guess you'll be... So the plan is you'll head out and then... The teleportation circle with the three of you going to Draenor? Yes. Yep. Okay. So that's that's you guys going there. And then we'll go to Rico for a bit now. Mm -hmm. So Rico, you're at your castle. Yeah. Or yes. sorry, not your castle, your citadel. Mm -hmm. Um actually so I have a question. Where would you be stationing your wife? And your unborn child, would it be here or would it be back in Bishop Manor? I actually like um I actually told her like uh yeah you I'll have her stationed in the citadel for now so that there is like you know, a bunch of military forces surrounding her at the moment and then you know, like if she agrees, great. But if she wants, you know, like I am sure she has her own personality. She'd be like, "Do you want to stay somewhere else?" You know, like communicate with me, wife. <laughs> what do you <laughs> want? <Communicate> with me. <laughs> See, you know, people don't talk. <laughs> but, uh, like I'm not gonna yeah. be the husband that tells you where to go and where to stay. You know. No. <laughs> you see, the problem is that women don't know what they want, though. <laughs> God damn it, Ken. <laughs> wow, dude. Okay, with that in mind. That in mind. Rico is a former woman, you know, so he knows, he understands. He, he, he understands is a former woman. Him. Oh God, yeah, he's a he's, he's a transsexual spiritually. <laughs> oh my oh, God, wow. spiritual transsexual. Exploring complex issues in D and D, folks. Right. So for less than that. Right. Right. What happens if you were transsexual spiritually? There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. So, I think what she would do is station herself in Baldur's Gate because that's where the ports are, so she can do business there and see the ships for herself. Oh, okay, good, good. I was speaking of which, you haven't named your wife yet, have you? Uh, no, her, she has a name now. Oh, she has a name now? Uh, what's her name? Her name is... Okay, I have a question, DM, actually. Like, we know her surname was King, but does she take my surname, or do we hyphenate I mean, it's it? it's entirely up to the two of you. I think that oh. she, would, she would take your name just because she's she's kind of traditional in that way. Okay. okay, then she yeah. takes my name now, so... Oh, there yeah. You go. So she's Rebecca Bishop. Yeah. Oh, Rebecca, nice. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, dude. Lady Rebecca. Lady Bishop. Oh, sounds cool, right? Lady Bishop. Yeah, dude. Lady and Lord Bishop. So yeah. Lady Bishop, or Rebecca Bishop, she is stationed oh. in Baldur's <laughs> Gate right now. Okay, that would actually be really nice if you visit her just before teleporting. Yeah, I will. I will visit her. I'll visit. I'll go to Baldur's Gate and uh, just tell her where I've been. Yeah, and then she heard the news about you know um, the invasion that happened a couple of days ago. She's glad that you're okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, I thank her for the concern, and I also tell her about. Um, the fact that I went to the Hunter Dark and uh, fought off uh, a few like aberrations, and uh, I also explained to her um, right now that I have 
uh, that I've allied myself with, like, four illithids who, who genuinely want to, like, be on the side of God. And I also tell her that those illithids were able to tell me where uh, where that Mithalar shard you seek is. And that um, if... Uh, if I play my cards right, I might be able to help those liches and find the methyl or shard in, in a short time, so you can use it for your ships. And she says, that's wonderful news. Well then, yeah. you should make haste, darling. Yes, thank you. And, uh, and then I also ask her, uh, like, uh, Regard since uh, there's no baby, by the way, are you like? Uh, do you feel strange somehow? Like, some weird things happen. But since you are pregnant with our child, she says that yes, she has been feeling weird, as is normal with pregnancies two months in. But then oh. she's been she's been okay. Like she's had t caretakers and her family around, so she's been fine. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. Uh, I tell her just, just, uh, just update me on like whatever happened, you know, just so I can attend to you as well personally. Yeah. And that's what she will do. Don't worry. Oh, by the way, Rico, do you want to tell her about the other flying alternative that the Illithids told you about? Because I think you would I, want to. Yeah, I'd also explain to her um, what the elephants told me about. Um, tell her, like, listen, Rebecca, there is also alternatives, actually. They, we might... The elephants have access to a technology called the Spelljammers and the Nautiloids. They are strange in design, but they also can fulfill the function that you seek with a, with a flying ship. So... Just thought you'd like to know that as well. That makes her think, ah. Huh? But then it would be an alien ship, then, wouldn't it? That is true. It might uh, alarm the common people. It's a bit alien in nature, so I don't know. Like, uh, if I can't find a Mythalar shard, I might try my hand at finding a Nautiloid for her us to use, just in case. Then she says, well, I would say that would be a contingency plan, my dear. Yeah, contingency, yeah. Besides, yes. like, it'll yeah. give us an edge over other people who are, who are thinking of using flying ships, you know? Indeed, and between you and me, I'd rather have a normal-looking ship that flies, rather than an alien-looking one. That's true, that's true. It was really very strange when they showed it to me. There were tentacles out of the flying <laughs> ship. It made no sense. <laughs> exactly. So she's like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> She says that that's like a last resort plan. She doesn't want to have tentacles coming out of the ship. Yeah. I also um explained to her, like, by the way, when I asked you if you were feeling strange, I actually, I actually meant if, like, uh, if you felt any supernatural instances, because, you see, I still have not understood the full implications of of uh, me being a god impregnating a mortal. I still don't know if there's an actual side effect to that, or if our child will be relatively normal. That's not she, much says, for she says she hasn't really felt any supernatural thing in her belly or otherwise. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. She says... Okay. It'll be fine. It's not like as though this is the first time this has happened, I'm sure. That's true. That's true. Okay. Was she pregnant before? <laughs> no, not that. No. I'm saying that. Oh my god. Not mortal being impregnated, dude. Come on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. By a god. 
She I'm actually has an ex god husband and like, right? uh, like, wait, a demi child somewhere <laughs> else in the world. I know, oh, right? It's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? You didn't tell me. <laughs> S- something about Rebecca, you know, she attracts the gods. Right? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Uh, that's good. That's good. Okay, uh, then I shall make haste then and get us that Nephalar shard. Alrighty. Okay. So uh, by guys... the way, DM, we're, are we gonna leave Baldur's Gate for like quite some time, right? Uh, yeah. You're probably gonna be away from there for a month or so. The thing is that, are we... Well, wait, no. I, the thing is that I, I still... I'm not sure if we're like... If I already know that the artifact that I'm looking for, the Talisman of True Evil, right? Is, um... Like, do we know a location of it yet? Or no? My, my people. Your people, well, you know that usually, like a talisman of ultimate evil, once it's dried up, it like ceases to be a talisman of ultimate evil. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, that's not true necessarily. Like, it can still be a magic item for the other buffs, but it doesn't do its activation that you know destroys a good destroys life good. creature. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, there have been reports of it being used here and there, and, you know, like, after the couple of times that it happened, it, the reports suddenly stopped. Oh, okay. I felt like Ashley in the lich earlier, but I kind of also felt like I, d- I don't want to. Oh, yeah, sure, that's fine. You don't have to talk to Larlock if you don't want to. Yeah, it's like, you might know, but he's gonna ask me another question again. Then we're just gonna be asking questions to each other all over the place. <laughs> that's his style, my dude. You I don't wanna, understand. You wanna get information from him? He got to get information from you. I don't wanna go through that toxic relationship, so. <laughs> <laughs> he answers a question with a question, you know? He's right? such a man of mysteries. Right? God, <laughs> he shoot me. I can't talk to this guy. <laughs> I wouldn't like to talk to that guy either, so... <laughs> That's fair. That's just Netherese talking, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, are all Netherese like this? Because if Sahara was also like this, I'd be like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, you don't know. <laughs> um... Alrighty. So, Rico, at what point will you be talking to the gods? Um... At some point before uh, I went to visit Rebecca, I think I'd go straight away and ask Mistra about um, the questions. And I'll have the Elithids as well in attendance too, so that they can, you know, gain some insight as well. Okay, so what will your questions be specifically? I can't recall what they were. Uh, I asked Mistra, um, please tell me the exact location of the Mithalar shard that lies in the heart of Faerun's desert, Anarok. Well, instead of an exact location, she tells you that there is a being in the Anarok desert will be yeah. who can tell you where to find it, for she resides there as a ghost right now. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Does she, does she tell me who the lady is? If you ask, yeah, sure. She'll say it's Lady Saharel. Ah, okay. Okay, so it's Lady Saharel. So I, I told the Elthids, look guys, it's the same person that we're looking for. <laughs> it's the same person. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> Mr. does say, though, you were, though, god of tact- uh god of tactics for you might not be the only one searching for this mythalar shard i i am prepared for that um eventuality my lady uh thank you for sharing this information uh sister and she says in in that case fare thee well sister i hope that fortune favors you Thank you. And then, do you want to talk to Ogma? Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I will 
I, I mean, I already spoke with Ogma about like how to help the elephants with their, uh, with their, you know, circumventing their biological needs. So, uh, I mean, we can uh, role play that as well. Uh, I think no need. <laughs> like okay, okay. the answer is basically that. Yeah. You know, um, there's two ways you can go about it. You can, you know, um, gain the godhood powers to be able to change their form again. Or you can yeah. go to Lady Saharel and unlock the secrets of becoming an archlich. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I, uh, I explain to the elephants then, like, what I've learned as well. I tell them, okay, so you have two options here, Cephalos and the other three. Um, you can turn into an arch lich, and I can connect us with Lady Saharel to learn the secrets. Being an arch arc lich, you can retain your sense of morality and still gain the abilities and benefits of a lich. At the same time, if you are willing to... I mean, you don't have to wait on it, but the other option is once I regain my godhood, I can grant you all the ability to not to sustain yourselves and not rely on brains anymore but understand if you're in a rush we can save that alternative for any other renegade elephants you create in the future okay. you know. in cephalosk's case though he says uh, thank you very much bishop however uh... I still have my goal of becoming a lich, regardless of whether we get that goal or not. Or you see, someone will need to ensure that we are shepherded in the right direction. Yes, I understand. I intend to live long enough to ensure that that change is permanent and that nothing will set it back. I understand. It's a, it's a valid reason to attain immortality. If that's the case, we should make haste now and uh, head for the rendezvous point so we can set sail for Anorak. I mean, not set sail, like travel there. Can't sail there. <laughs> Indeed. Let us head out. Oh, and hmm, I guess you can buy your hats of disguises in Baldur's Gate en route. Yeah, yeah, okay. I give them... Uh... Cephalos will get the fedora hat since he's the cool one, and then the rest of <laughs> the baseball, the newsboy, and the cowboy hat, you know, so, yeah. Oh my goodness, I don't know if there's a baseball cap version. I mean, okay, you know what? A hundred years have passed. Sure, why not? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there can be a baseball version. Uh, We're getting there, guys. Just wait until Steam Power gets discovered. <laughs> oh my god, top hats. There you go. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Alright, so... I guess you teleport all four... No, five of you? Five of us, yeah. To uh, uh, Draenor. Draenor. Okay. So the teleportation fee for five people, like especially if you're going with a caravan, which I think you would secure, because you know you don't want to travel there on your own. I'm presuming, like you'll want yeah. to have supplies. Okay. We want to travel in style. <laughs> so you secure yourself a caravan, five of you, and you book three more spots in the caravan. Although, I guess you don't really need to book spots for a caravan. You just need to make sure there are enough supplies. Yeah. So, yeah, you get enough supplies for a whole bunch of people. And then, all of that is going to cost you quite a sum. So, you can divide this amongst yourselves later. But the total amount to prepare for this is going to be like... Let's see. Including teleportation fees. That's going to be... 600 GP. Oh, okay. Yeah. 600. Okay. Yeah, my dude. It's gonna be 30 months worth of supplies. So, yeah. Or, sorry, not 30 months, but like a month or so. Oh my god, when you said 30 months, I was like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> excuse me? 
<laughs> That's enough time to travel the whole of Toril, man. Um, and other planes. Oh, still. so 150 each? Yeah, 150 yeah. each. Okay. Maybe 150 each. What? Sina will not be part of this because she's busy in the keep. That's how we'll yeah. explain that she's not present. Yeah, yeah. I already yeah. removed 150. Alright, okay. you already removed 150. Yeah. Alright. Uh, <laughs> the Illithids have no gold to speak of, so you don't have to I'll worry cover about it. them, yeah. yeah. Uh, if, while we're traveling, in the time we're traveling before we meet the rendezvous point, I guess I'll try to teach the four Illithids, like, human etiquette, just so they can blend in well. They're, they're not ignorant about that. They've eaten brains oh, okay. from people who know these things. Yeah, they got, okay, they got the information. Yeah, yeah good, they got good, that good. information. Good. It's just that, you know, like, some of them are familiar with magic because they've eaten brains of spellcasters, but then others not so much. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a mixed bag. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, it doesn't take long for you to caravan teleport to Mithdranor, so probably at most a day it'll take until you rendezvous with the others. Okay, So, good. yeah, you are all together now at this point in Mithdranor. And Mithdranor is like a very foresty city. It's very much integrated with, with nature. Like, a lot of the houses uh -huh. are in trees. Like, That's carved so cool. out trees, yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, Fenrir, this is kind of a familiar site-ish for you, since you've been in elven enclaves before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um... Some people actually recognize you because of your... Um... Your, how do I say? Your victories in the Colosseum of... Of wherever it was you stayed. <laughs> Forgot where it was now, I have to read your backstory again. He's, he's yeah, a famous so, gladiator. Yeah, he's pretty famous among elves. So oh. Fenrir, yeah. And this is the first time that you all notice that Fenrir is actually a star. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, some of them recognize you. They say, oh my god, you're Fenrir, son of Petty Lupin, aren't you? Yes, ma'am, I am. <laughs> Yeah, then they're like, oh my god, there's like starstruck. It's like seeing a famous star for the first time. Some of them are asking for your autograph. Some of you are asking, some of them are asking you to claw mark like their favorite piece of wood or their favorite, their favorite <laughs> thing. <laughs> they're like, please carve my armor. It will mean so much to me. <laughs> I happily obliged them. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Okay, so you've you've managed to make some people happy. Their your claw mark is permanently carved into their armor or their wood piece or something like that. One of the wood carvers says, "Oh my god, God, I'm gonna fashion this into a staff. Just you wait, sir. I'll make you proud." <laughs> and and all this time, Fenrir uh, looks like Hercules in the cartoons, or. <laughs> 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 Nice. <laughs> yeah, like the time that he became famous, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like that's very much the vibe right now that you're having in Myth Genre. Um some of them notice that you have a caravan around you and they're saying Safe trip, Fenrir. We'll wait we'll await your return. <laughs> and some of them say, Just you wait, I'm gonna prepare a grand feast for your return, Fenrir. And he, he says, I look forward to the steaks. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, take note, he said steaks. <laughs> and then they're <laughs> like, they say like, don't worry, there'll be tons of steak for you when you get back. Alrighty. So there you go. That's the people of Mithranor. Wow. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're really crazy about Fenrir. So there you go, and then yeah, I guess all of you are gonna be heading into the desert right away, then yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we should uh, on the way though. I like to tell the others like we should compare notes on what we've 
gathered, maybe we will, you know, learn learn something. We'll we'll have some insights, you know. So I explain to them first. Like I've uh, I've spoken with Lady Mistra actually, and she told me about where the Mithalar shard is. It's in the well, not exactly, but she told me that the Ark Lich, Lady Saharel, would know where it is. And um, before we actually, uh, uh, when she told me that, I, I did some digging on the lady, and apparently she she looks at, uh, she is, uh, she was also from a Netherese, uh mage, and uh, she, yeah, she would know where the Mithalar Shard is, and she's somewhere in the desert. We have to... Uh, so she could also help the Elithids attain lichdom, and we won't have to worry about them turning evil. So, so that's what I found out. What did you guys find out? <laughs> Hello, at Dante. <laughs> you look at Dante. <laughs> Lady Saharel is within the heart of the Anorak Desert, so we don't. We no longer need to survey the perimeter uh we can yeah. just focus on the middle yes um, and uh so yeah that's uh wait um that's that's it okay <laughs> is there is there something that we need to know about lady sarahel has she i don't know probably destroyed the entire civilization at some point being a lich and all i mean an arc lich. Listen, oh. uh, you don't have to worry. Arc liches retain their sense of morality even after attaining lichdom. From what well, I've heard, she didn't do anything particularly bad. So we, I don't think we have to worry. Okay. Okay. Research, by yeah, the way. Yeah, she, um, she's chaotic Mishnah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just want to clarify. <laughs> I just want to clarify. <laughs> Part of your research, by the way, Rico Bishop, is that Saharel knew Elminster and she sacrificed herself to make sure he succeeded in a dire mission. Yeah. Yeah. That's why she's a ghost now. Yeah, so I explained that and I tell her, she seems like a bigger picture kind of lady, so, you know, like, hopefully she'll cooperate with us willingly. Understandable, understandable. Mm -hmm. Just, it, you know, meeting a lich and all this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> He's still shaken from the experience. Well, not necessarily shaken, annoyed is the word. <laughs> annoyed is the word, okay. It's like, ugh, why can't I just smite this bitch? Not, not necessarily, it's just like, why can't he just answer my fucking questions? <laughs> ah, man. <laughs> Like I, 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 I told um I told Beta like what do you mean? He answered my question when I visited him. I just what I just I just wave a hand at him, whatever red knight. <laughs> <laughs> whatever red knight. I don't I don't need to talk I don't need to talk about this guy again. <laughs> Although I would like to I would like to visit him again at some point. Hey. Someone has a love hate relationship with the Lich right now, clearly. It's more of just like a hate relationship right now and trying to make it better. Uh, it's like an inter interested <laughs> hate relationship. Yeah, it's just it's just interested so far. Ah, okay, there you go. That's an accurate picture. Fenrir, on the other hand, doesn't give two shits about liches. <laughs> well, they're made of bones, so... That's that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it just it just makes him hungrier, you know. The more that he interacts with liches. <laughs> all right. Okay. So you all are heading into Anorak Desert, and well, hmm, probably through a combination of spells and just gathering information from people as much as you can. You know that Saharel's last resting place is in a place that was called Spellguard? Yeah, the castle. It's a castle, yeah. Yeah, and um, to get to that part of the adventure right away, I'll say that you spent 30 days 
like gathering the information, doing the traveling, resting up, and all of those sorts of things going mm -hmm. towards there. Yeah. However, on one of the days, on one of the days while you were en route there, you do have an encounter with a blue dragon. <clears throat> yeah. So overhead one day in Where's the, the link? Where's the link? No, no link yet. Like, <laughs> oh, I'll, no, I'll bear link? Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how this goes first. We'll see how this goes first. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, from the skies, like, somebody shouts, Oh my god, it's a blue dragon. Like, in the distance, you can see it flying around. And then like, everybody oh, no. in the caravan is saying, Okay, okay, just stay calm. Just give it whatever it asks for, okay? Oh, yeah, I like, just I just kind of nod just once, and just like, oh okay. shit, here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. Yeah, for Fatal, this is extremely bad because he's immune to one of your elements. Yeah. yeah. That's fine, I got other spells. True, that's true. Alright, so the blue dragon kind of like um, flies overhead of all of you and the caravan. And then. Well, I don't really have a voice for him, but he basically demands that the caravan gives all of its treasures, especially gems. Oh. So, yeah, he's asking everyone to empty their gems. So, depends on how much y'all are willing to, like, give this dragon. I don't got gems, goddamn. <laughs> okay, you don't have gems. Anyone else? Mm. Do I have jumps? No, I don't have jumps. I'll give him, uh... I'll give him... Can he smell them? He wants gems specifically, right? He wants gems and other valuables, but he likes gems in particular. You kind of, like, notice that after somebody throws a gem. Let me have like a look. looking at that in particular. I don't have Dang gems. It. I have two gems, but they're useful to me. I'm not going to give it away. I can offer him uh, one of the silver coffers that I carry from the robe of useful things. So, like, put it on, pull out one pouch, and give him a silver coffer. Ooh, okay. Then after that, he's like, wow. I mean, he pays attention to that, and he says, well, looks like you're a rich one. Have you really emptied everything you have? Uh... <laughs> this I'm was like... really huge, by the way. This is like a gargantuan... A gargantuan dragon. Oh gargantuan. my god! What? Yeah. He says, You better not lie to me, little one. This is my domain. Um, uh, I tell him, like, listen, we have other business, and we kind of need all our items to ensure that we survive, so, like, we'd rather not give our items, so... Uh, Dante you know. will, Dante will raise a hand, uh, to, to kind of, like, pause, uh, Rico, okay. and then, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dante will say... O oh, great and powerful blue dragon, your glory is uh, immeasurable, and we would be uh, we would be remiss not to learn your name. Oh, <laughs> and then he says, "Ah, this little one wants to know my name, does he?" And then he kind of like puts his ho points his horn directly in front of you and says. I'll need your name first, little one. Of course, I am called Dante, but I am only—I am insignificant compared to you. And then he says, "Damn right you are, <laughs> for I am Elek. I am the king of this part of the desert." Uh, Dante will then say, "Oh, great Elek." Surely, surely our gems mean so little and are, are completely worthless to you. But 
if you will let us pass and grant us a quest to <laughs> to help you acquire more treasure, we will surely do it. Oh, okay, interesting. And then he says, oh, you wish to become my subject? It would be our honor. <laughs> <laughs> and then he ha laughs heartily. <laughs> oh, well, it's been a while since I've had a humanoid servant. The last one tried to steal my gems, and now he's gone. We would not then, think well, to do such a thing. That is idiotic. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Well, this is nice. I like this. Well, there's something I would like you to do, actually. Then he says, Dante. Dante, was it? Yes, I am... I am filled with much joy that you remember my name. Indeed, indeed. Dante, there is something in the desert. Something in the desert that... No one else has claimed yet. No person can touch this object. It has a metal stand that it sits on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what, what is this object you seek? Apparently it is an object of great magical power. From the Netherese era, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, we are Dude. merely lowly adventurers. We do, not do, we do not know much of most magical items, but we will search for it. Indeed, I would do it myself, but I am too big to enter ruins. Do it for me, will you, Dante? Oh, yes, we shall, um, great and powerful Anek. It's Alec, my dude. Alec. Alec. Okay. <laughs> what can okay. I say, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we know uh, it's in a ruin. It's in ruins and it's on a metal stand thing. Yeah, it's like on a big metal stand. Great. More yeah. info. More info. <laughs> What can I say, man? Mistra did say that she, you're not the only one looking for it. Yep. Yeah, I remembered, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm just Dante's uh, just buying time, and yeah, trying to yeah. get out of there alive. Actually, uh, remain silent the whole time, but I'm like annoyed because I hate <laughs> dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's canon that the Red Knight actually hates dragons, but this incarnation hates them. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, okay. You all managed to survive. Um, it did take one of your coffers, though, Rico, since you already, mm. like, presented it. I but did. But no further prodding. Great. He kind of, like, flies off, and what last time he says, I will be expecting it sometime soon. Okay. All right. Great. So that is the end of that encounter. So you met Elek in the desert, and you're his quote-unquote um, subjects at the moment. Yeah, I didn't sign any contract, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. As far as he's concerned, like it's his law now. Hmm. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> it's a problem for future <laughs> Dan the Dante. Caravan, I'm just like, we're not giving him the shard, right? That's just a... It's just a ploy, right? I'm just, uh, Dante, uh, and then Dante just... Of course we are! What are you doing looking at the skies? No. He's <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> still there! <laughs> uh, no, I mean, he's gone now. He's gone at okay, this point. Okay, oh, okay. Okay, okay. I thought, I thought it was still flying around. Like, okay. I would have just chipped in and said, Yeah, no, why are you talking about that? I'm <laughs> joking, we are giving him the shot. <laughs> <laughs> ha 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 ha. And Benner <laughs> just says, Well, it can be a shard of the shard. 
Mm -hmm. I just I just got like quiet. Just like wait, that's actually true. <laughs> it could be a shard of the shards. <laughs> oh no, he wanted like the whole thing. He made that. Oh okay. Weird. Oh, he made oh. that. Okay. Oh. Yeah, he wants hey. the whole thing. I uh I explained to the uh, guys the like. What he said is true, though. Like, no mortal can safely touch it. We will just burn to death if we touch it directly. So, we actually have to find a way to, I don't know, move it around without touching it. Mm. So, actually, if, if we want to kill the dragon, we could just, like, shove it in his scales, and he'll probably burn to death as well. <laughs> How do we do that? You would have to touch it yourself, or like somehow move it around. Yeah, we'd have to launch it somehow. <laughs> mm. uh. Okay, okay, okay. It's uh, it's a very dangerous item, actually. I actually had thoughts, what if we put a tiny shard in a sword? And, you know, like, a, a shard of Mythar is enough to kill any undead warriors as well, so, you know, it's... It's kind of a a mythalar shard doesn't sound like a cool, like. But then again, if if we accidentally hit ourselves with the blade, we could die as well. So it's a very risky weapon. Yeah. It's a it's a problem item. Yeah, <laughs> problematic. <laughs> Wrong tap on the shoulder and we're gone. <laughs> yeah, dude, just like that. Yeah. Well, natural. You mean technically roll a natural one when you're next to your teammate, then that guy's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, you don't have to worry about that though. I don't have fumble rules for a natural one with attacks. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. That would be that would be the situation where someone dies. <laughs> Alrighty. So continuing back. So at this point you would be at the place where you think is spell guard. Yeah. Um with your caravan. Um, a lot of these people who join the caravan, they kind of just want to, at the end of this, go to the other side at Parnast. So, okay. it's kind of, you're kind of like taking an east going west direction. That's why, like, eventually they'll reach Parnast. But you're taking uh, a little bit of a detour because the Red Knight said, well, I got a quest to do. Um, and then, yeah, they're just along for the ride. And... <laughs> Uh, a lot of them are kind of being like tourists right now. They're looking around in the, like, ruined castle. Nice. Some of them are going, like, at the second floor and stuff. Um, nice. And then eventually, I think you would wait until night time or something like that. Or you'd reach here mm -hmm. by night time. And then you see the ghost of Lady Saharel going around the castle. Ooh. Yeah, the the people who are aware of the rumors of the ghost of um ghost of Anarok are like really spooked and also awed right now. Like, thought... mommy, mommy, it's it's the ghost. It's the white lady. Wait, wait. I thought she's supposed to be a skull, like skeletons. Our oh, no, she... can take. I mean. She became a ghost somehow. <laughs> okay. Not really good with this lich thing, if you have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, too. You're supposed to be knowledgeable about this. Well, I have an intelligence of eight. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me give you an idea of what Lady Sahara looks like. So there you I, go. I've seen that. I googled her. They did? Yeah. For the audience, then. So Lady Sahara looks like that. There you go. It looks amazing. Mm. Yeah. It's shook. And... Shook AF. Woke. She's woke right now. <laughs> yeah, and she's just kind of like walking around. Then... Actually, some people start to talk to her and ask questions like, uh, Who are you? And then she responds, I am Lady Sahara. One of the... One of the old ladies and lords of Nether of the Netherese Empire. Then they ask other questions, and she seems to be very forthcoming with information. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's... Like whatever the question may be, <laughs> she just answers it. It confirms my research then. She is quite... She just answers a lot of questions, yeah. Yeah, so there's that. And then, um, at this point, you can interject and ask her some questions, because that's part of your quest. Yeah. I, uh... I walk forward to her and I tell her... I actually murmur to the others as well. I tell them, before asking her, I tell her, it is said that she views the harp members of the Harpers with favor as well, and she hates the Zentarem very much. Oh, well, looks like, we're not getting, looks like we're not getting any of her favors since none of us are part of the Harpers. <laughs> we, got someone, we got someone who was relative to the Harpers, but, you know, that's it. I know it's a shame. We could have brought Lord Darfin with us, but he's busy. I mean, I'm not sure if he's a Harper, but he sure behaves like one. So <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Red yeah, light. How do <laughs> how do Harpers behave exactly? I don't know. I'm not one of them, so I can't yeah. really answer. How can you tell yourself you're not one of them? <laughs> wait, <laughs> no, Deep I'm down, not. we're all Harpers. <laughs> Did that Harpers would like to think? So wait a minute, we could be all Harpers. Yeah. <laughs> Even Fenrir could be a Harper, man. Jeez. I look at Fenrir. Are you a Harper, Fenrir? <laughs> <laughs> Are you been a Harper all this time? <laughs> Not that I know. Of. Oh, oh my God, that's a Harper. We're the not Harpers. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Such a harper thing to say. I know, anyway. right? Um, yes, man, any one of your caravan members could be a harper, you just don't know. Oh my god. Uh, the potted plant over there could be a harper. <laughs> yeah, for, for all we know, the potted plant could be a harper, yeah. You never know that. I mean, anyway. there aren't any potted plants, but there are like tree branches here and there. Yeah. 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 All right, so um, anybody want to talk to Lady Saharel? She's just interacting with some of the caravan members at the moment. I'll, um, what about you guys? Do you guys want to ask her some questions first before me and the Illithids ask her? Or I got nothing, man. I was all to ask her. Dante will... Uh, speaking of, the Illithids look like you know, a mix of other humanoids. Mm. Some of them look yeah. like half orcs, some of them look like elves. Wait, the cute thing is that they have like, they have like a, what do you call it, cowboy hat? It's like a half orc, so cute. Yeah. I, I actually, yeah, I did, I did tell them, I gave them like, uh, human identity, humanoid identities to take over. Like, I just sift through my memories from when I was still human back in the war and I just tell him, you can impersonate these like four people. They're like long dead by now. So. <laughs> yeah, one of them is John. The other one is Joseph. You know. Yeah, the, yeah. Their, their names all start with a J. Yeah, <laughs> like they're... John, Joseph, Joe. Yeah. yeah. John, Joseph, Joe. And the last and one Jared. is Jemima. <laughs> Jemima. <laughs> it's such a random one. Jemima. <laughs> like, that last one, Jemima. It's like everyone with John, Joseph, Joe, and then we have Jemima here. He's weird. Jemima. <laughs> He's weird Jemima, like that. Jemima's the weirdest of all of them, you know? <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. a Goliath. Yeah, he, he just ate like one too many weirdo brains, so she's the weirdest skeleton over there. Oh <laughs> the God. weirdest part is that he's actually just still an illithid, even though yeah. she's wearing the hat, but everyone oh. just kind of thinks that's humanoid. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's kind of now. <laughs> it's just like everyone just acts like he's invincible, that's it. <laughs> invisible. It's like, uh, what's wrong with Jemila? It's like, uh, I don't want to ask. <laughs> I'll just explain, like, Jemila likes to pretend she's a mind flayer, and we just don't want to, like, you know, delve into that. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want to not vibe with her, you know? She's such a cool guy, you know? We want to vibe. He's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, she's fucking weird, yo. <laughs> there you go. And it just works, you know? Dante will hold oh back uh, first and uh, wait until Rico and the Illicids have asked the questions. Oh yeah, I think I'll also ask her about the talisman after whatever Red Knight's asking him, her, 
it, whatever, her thing. <laughs> the... Uh... <laughs> be safe, man. Say they. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to assume her gender in any way. She looks like a girl ghost, but she might have been a dude god before. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All uh, of this, okay. I got it's, it, safe. I got it. it's safe to say they at this point. Yes, it's a day. It's a day. It's a day. Okay, so, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll start with um, Lady Saharal, then I'll ask her. Um, Lady Saharal, I, I would like to ask. If you're aware of the exact location of a Mithalar shard in this desert. A Mithalar shard. She... Hold on. Let me see if I can find my notes for that. She does tell you where you can find it. So, hold on, let's see here. Oh no, that's not the right one. Mithalar... Mithalar... Okay, there it is. So she kind of tells you that, let's see, she tells you there's a fallen floating city from lo from millennia ago, it used to be Iolam's enclave, it's a oh. city, it's a ruined city na that's called Sin Lenal, let me put that here, Sin Lenal. San Lenal, okay. Yeah, San Lenal. She says okay. that uh, mm -hmm. that that is where you can find a Mithalar shard. Okay. Um, is it? No, sorry, not a Mithalar shard. A Mithalar. An entire Mithalar. Okay. Uh, I tell her, um, is. Is it easy to spot, or is it buried? Is it guarded by creatures? Wait, my lady? She says, In millennia's past, it was guarded heavily. I am sure that even now, it is guarded. Ah, I see. Okay. And, uh... Okay. Um, may I know what the, who the guardians are? Would you know? Can they be reasoned with? <laughs> okay, one thing at a time. So the Guardians, oh. they are called Thaludes. Uh, let me type that out. Thal okay. A Thalud. Uh, they are called Thalud. She says that they are creatures that are featureless except for a mouth in their stomach with a jagged maw and has rows of sharp teeth. Oh. Okay. It carries with it a hammer, and it will defend the Mithalar from anybody who seeks to enter, who seeks to claim it. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then the other one was, is it visible? It, can they be reasoned with? Can we, like, negotiate with them? Uh, can you negotiate with them? She says... Uh, most likely you cannot, for they venerate these magical items, and items similar to it. They see it as some sort of deity of theirs. They will not part with it easily. Okay. And, uh, my, uh, are they, um, uh, are they sentient, or are they constructs of magic? I'd like to know if, uh, if, if I could, you know, avoid, if I have to avoid killing them, I don't want to kill them. Hmm, are they? She says, they are indeed sentient. However, they are creations from the Netheries a long time ago. Okay. All right, all right. In that case, I'll uh, find a way to um, disable them while I get the... Okay. Uh, she tells you you can't really disable them. The only way to disable them is to knock them out 
try to kill them. Right. Okay. I understand. And, uh, I do have another question, but this is not related to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the Mithalar, I mean. Uh, I'd like to ask her, uh, what, what would be, what, what would be the result of, uh, of, of a more of a god inside a mortal body, what would be the result if they copulated with a mortal woman? Would the baby be divine? Would it be an Empyrean, or would it be like completely mortal? She says, most likely it will end up becoming a demigod. <laughs> uh, Fenrir, um, so you're kind of familiar with this question because of your upbringing. So, yes. Yeah, so like, uh, she says that eventually it will become strong enough to be able to be a god among men. Oh, okay. And, um... Federer <laughs> strikes a pose. Fenrir <laughs> <laughs> strikes a pose. Everyone is wondering, uh, why is Fenrir striking a pose? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I tell, I ask her, um, okay, uh, and will, as a demigod, will they be able to also take their own domain in the future, or will they just be stuck as a demigod? She says, that will be entirely up to the child, or I some see. choose to gain godhood others choose to remain mortal i see okay uh, thank you lady cyril for your answers and um I, I i want to return the favor somehow um is there anything you'd like me to do in exchange for giving me all these answering all my inquiries perhaps she does actually have a favor for you, so she says, My city spell guard it did not used to look like this. Would you kindly fix the area for me? I want ah. it to look as beautiful as it once did. I will, I will do my, everything in my power to fix what I can right now. Thank you. And then she says, one more thing. Okay. If you ever find Elminster, please tell him that this lady is waiting for him. I will do that. I promise. All right. There you go. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a surprise for you, Rico, because you don't know about Lady Saharel and Ilminster. You know about yeah. them separately, though. Not that they had the connection somehow. Yeah, I just, I just put two and two together. Since I'm wearing the headband, I'm like, oh, they must have a thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, so yeah, those right. are the two things she asks for in return, which she can do whenever you like. She's not really giving a deadline for that. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll do some in the meantime while the rest ask questions. Um, I, I'll usher the elephants to, you know, so that they can ask her the secrets of being an art glitch. And, yeah. Oh yeah, sure. And they get tons of useful informa information. So right. we don't have to go too deep into that, although there will be some soul harvesting involved, unfortunately. That's just part of the process. Okay. Yeah. I try to listen in. It's like uh, I asked the if it's ask her if you have to take if evil souls are okay to harvest or you know. <laughs> they, they don't even bother asking that because they think that's probably a given, Master Bishop. Okay. Like, okay. Uh, good. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I, whoever wants to overhear that, there is going to be some soul harvesting involved. 
So that part Thank of you. the process can't be avoided. So mm. yeah. Okay. Um, that's it. Wait, for we're harvesting area. souls. Uh, no, the elephants need to harvest <laughs> souls so they can become perform, a lich. To perform, become an arc lich. Yeah. There's oh a my difference. god. We're gonna help them do that. I mean, <laughs> I don't, they're they're fully capable, and I did warn them, you know, only harm evil people, not innocent people. So you know, oh, they're gonna harvest yeah. the souls of evil people. Yeah, you know, like I don't know, like we they can go kill a rapist for all I care or a pedophile. Like who cares? <laughs> like who cares? They can go to the jail. They can go to the jail. Ooh, I mean, that's a nasty punishment, man. Shit. Yeah, I know, I, that's what they get for hurting children, you know, so... There you go, there Fine. you go. Yeah, okay, so no problem in that front, I think. And the Illithids yeah. at this point, thank you for all of the help that you've given. And they can actually start doing things their own way. Like, you can go your own separate ways at this point, but they'll stick around until you reach Paranast. Okay, okay. So, okay. I think that's it for the Illithid's turn of questioning. Anyone else want to ask Sarah anything? She's just answering people's questions left and right as they come. Dante will go uh, last. Yeah. He wants to okay. have this conversation with... Saharel in private. Okay. Understood. <clears throat> okay. Well, I guess I'll just ask her if she knows where the Talisman of Ultimate Evil is. She says, there are more than one of those in the universe. The one that is near here in Faerun. I'm unsure where it is at the moment, but... As I remember, it is with a man who allies himself with demons. Ah, uh, okay. So that's, that's good enough. So it's a man that aligns himself with demons. Yeah. Wait, hold up, didn't you? I look at that, is your grandfather aligned with demons? <gasps> <laughs> oh wow, you just shot that question right there. Well, no, I didn't shot it right there, I just realized that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Alright, alright. As a player. Okay. The talisman is with him? I don't know. Okay. Could be. It says, it, says, it says, like, a man who aligns with all demons, right? Yeah, that's all she said. Oh, shit! I, I thought Fatal, I mean, you can ask her who the man is. It's like, you know, like, there's no limit to the questions. There's, shh, Red Knight. It's for <laughs> narrative purposes. We need the suspense. Narrative suspense. We need the drama. Uh, yeah, I, might as well give it a shot. Like, yo, like, you know the man, you know, there's a, there's a guy named that's close to like, M-A-R-O, you know? <laughs> she says, uh, I do not know who this uh, person is, but I do know that he has been around for several years. Oh, is oh. he old enough to be a grandfather? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, dude. <laughs> okay, that's not my time. Let's do that. <laughs> I just, I just bow in front of her. It's like, thank you. That's more information we haven't got since, well, since I've been looking for the talisman. She says, and I appreciate what you will do for me in return. Thank you very much. And I nod. And then walk back. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, Fenrir is PR being, so you can't really ask questions at the moment. I mean, you will be last, Wayne, but then, like, maybe we can do yours first while waiting for okay. Fenrir. Yeah, I'm gonna follow uh, Lady Saharel around, and she, she floats, floats around. Uh, I'll make sure I'm out of earshot from the rest of the group. Sure. This would probably be sometime in the evening because a lot of people are asking questions. Ah, okay. So in, in that in that case, like Dante is gonna uh, pretend that he has no questions to ask her until the group decides to wind down or rest, 
uh, by the caravans or something or like camp for the night and then he'll mm -hmm. sneak out to have a conversation with Lady Saharel. Sure. And I think anybody who would have noticed that would just leave you alone anyways. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, approaches Lady Saharel and then he says, Good evening, my lady. Hi. You are the one who was quiet the whole day today. What can I do for you? I... I have a few questions to ask and I wanted to make sure that our conversation be kept private. And then she says, <laughs> only if nobody asks about it. Mm. Um, my name is Dante Maro, a bright candle of the hoppers. Ah, and she's like... She hasn't been smiling the whole day, it's like she's kind of like a straight face, but she smiles at that and she says, Well now, that's a pleasant surprise. To what do I owe this pleasure, bright candle? I... I'm in search for... another Harper as well, my grandfather. Um, he's... somewhere in the shadow fell and... I do not know how to reach him. I do not know if he's even alive. Might you have any idea how to traverse the Shadowfell from this plane without use of spells like Plane Shift or other powerful spells that I'm not strong enough to wield yet? And then she says, well, there are these dark gates, gates that lead towards the Shadowfell. However, they are sparsed here and there in Faerun. Might you know of the location of one? Hmm, would she know the location of one? She says, during the time of the fall of the cities, there was one city that went into the shadow fell. That portal that they opened up long ago, its energy still remains somewhere in the desert. She tells you, I mean, she kind of like, as much as she possibly can, because it's a, ha a huge desert. Yeah. Like, the coordinates of where you can find the, the, what do you call this? The Shadow Gate. Yeah. Yeah, so, she, she gives you an idea of where it is. Somewhere in like, the western part of Anarok. Like, close to Everesca. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you know how to get into the shadow play without needing to use a spell for that at the moment. You okay. know, of one location. She says there are also many others, Bright Candle, but you would need to seek out that information from other scholars such as yourself. Hmm. Um. I wanted to ask our purpose from for coming here was to seek out a mythalar and acquire a mythalar shard but i can't help but feel that um items and objects as powerful as mythalar would only result in further chaos in the world i mean what does what do the mythalar what purpose do they serve now that's a pretty deep question she says that well right now they serve no purpose they are just being venerated by the ones that protect it but now that others are aware of the Mithalar and are going after it, 
I'm sure that in the near future it will play a big role in Faerun's fate. I fear that role might lead to chaos. And I am strongly considering destroying the Mithalar. Then she says, that will be a daunting task, Bright Candle, for it took Karsus's folly to destroy all of the Mithalaris. And then it took a spell plague for it to be all rendered useless. What are you going to be doing of similar magnitude in order to make that happen? Hmm. I guess I still lack a little bit more control. Perhaps. And perhaps there is an angle that you have not seen yet. What angle might that be? I am unsure, but there are many secrets in this world, some in places that nobody else dared to traverse. Like the Shadowfell? Like the Shadowfell, like the Upper Plains, like plains outside of our own. She also tells you that, like, be even in crystal spheres outside of our own. Yeah. And this might be the first time that you heard about crystal spheres, or maybe you're already educated on that. Uh, probably not. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, I like the idea. Time. I like the idea that Dante is being told these things by uh, Lady Sahrel. Yeah. So she tells you that perhaps even in other universes, in other crystal spheres. Yeah, uh, at that point Dante feels like even smaller and uh, but it excites him, you know, that though like everything else is so big. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then Uh, he just he just says I just want to make sure everything stays stays safe you know stays uh, and then Dante just bows his head he remembers like um, his previous trauma and shit <laughs> and then <laughs> I know, man. Yeah. Then uh, she actually asks a question in turn. Right, Candle, you seem unwell. What is wrong? I've been having this constant struggle with control over myself, over my situations, my powers, and. Um. I've tried to let go, but I guess it's just a part of me, and I don't like it when uh, things around me that could go wrong, go wrong. There is this great wizard that I've read of, uh, you might have heard him, Murphy. He created this law <laughs> called the Murphy's Law. <laughs> <laughs> I am familiar with Murphy. <laughs> oh god. Okay. That is that is just it. I right now I I walk among this this reincarnated god and as good as he 
he portrays himself to be, I cannot help but uh, feel worried that he'll turn on us, turn on, turn against the world. He speaks now of using, he speaks of using the myth, uh, he speaks of using the mythalar as uh, ways for travel or using shards, embedding them into weapons and. I just can't help but think of all the ways these could go wrong. Dante is Batman confirmed. <laughs> Dante is Batman confirmed. <laughs> and then she says, Bright candle, your worries are understandable. There are many who have walked your path. There are many who have thought your thoughts. And the truth is that future is always going to be uncertain. Mm. She does further say though, however, the universe has a way of correcting itself, no matter what happens. Yeah, that is something I've yet still need to learn to live with not truly being able to achieve perfect control just letting things take its take its course it's difficult for me she says you will have to find the strength to d allow things to happen as they do. For the more that you obsess over control Dante, the more that it might eat you. I knew a man once who was like that. You speak of... The wizard Elminster? No. Oh. I speak of another one. He is uh -huh. like me, but not. He is like me, but opposite. And then I think this is Larlock. <laughs> yeah, she says, oh, you know of him. Uh, more than I'd like. And I recently paid him a visit, and he sends his regards. <laughs> She's a bit surprised by that, and then she says, Well, I think this is a good thing that you're aware of him. Keep him in your mind, and remind yourself that that is the person that you don't want to become. Mm. Uh, Dante will bow his head and he'll say thank you for your wisdom Lady Sahara and I thank you for speaking with me Bright Candle I hope to see you again and I hope that you find your grandfather in the shadow fell Dante turns around and leaves all right. <laughs> that was a really nice interaction, dude. Yeah, I like that. That was nice. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. All right, uh, Fenrir, do you have any questions? So Dante was kind of like last, but since you were away a while ago, we can do your part. And then after that, I guess we can have a lunch break because it's already 11.56. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Fenrir doesn't really have much to ask. He's just, uh, he's just wondering, would you know of any way to infuse my claws with more power? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then she says, oh, well, I'm pleased to be graced by the presence of Alar's son. You know of my father? Indeed, I know of many deities. 
I've heard about you as well. Your story goes far and wide, Fenrir Lupin. But that doesn't seem to be the case for my father. Uh, he has left me and he has never really communicated with me anymore. Then she says, that is very likely because of who he is as a god. Or you see, Malar only recognizes those with might. And I guess that is the goal I have set for myself. You see, I am in search for more power for him to actually recognize me. And then she says, I am sure that he will recognize you very soon, for there are many trials ahead of you that I can foresee. And then she tries to answer your original question about the claws. She says, I think that once you've defeated a foe of immense strength, then you'll be recognized by your father. Then I look forward to all of the challenges that are coming my way. And, the, and I look forward for you as well. I hope that you and the Red Knight will be able to overcome all of your challenges and that Faerun will be a bright uh, Faerun's future will be bright essentially so yeah there you thank go. you <laughs> alright so yeah uh, Fenrir in story knows how his claws are gonna get stronger now yes Deal. he just has to he just to has cast. to fight someone really. <laughs> yeah. He just has to fight someone really fucking strong. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, Fenrir, would you ask that in front of people? Yeah, I don't, like a yeah, I don't really mind. Again, uh, I shrug about all of these things all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. this... ah, there you go. <laughs> Just gloss over the fact that he's a demigod. <laughs> like, yeah. What? I know. Right? I also like. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, Nariko doesn't have his, um, you know, his unique flavor anymore. <laughs> no, he's like. No, I'm just like more like. Uh, I feel like bad that you know, like uh, Fender is like mostly ignored by Malar. It's like. Oh shit, I should never ignore like my demigod child out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a list of things that you should not do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, oh like, I just add to my list, must be involved with my demigod child. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wait, are you saying Lesson that Fender... Learned. Are you saying that Fender wasn't raised well because his dad wasn't around? No, oh, I didn't dude. say that. I'm, so, but I'm concerned <laughs> because Fenner is like, you know, putting himself in dangerous situations just to get his father's attention. It's like, oh wow. But yeah. you know, like on the flip <laughs> side, it's also what made Fenrir strong, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right? 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 Exactly. That's so true. Hey, you should totally ignore your kid. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh, only two that ways to view this. <laughs> Also, think, think about it this way. We're all putting ourselves in dangerous situations. <laughs> Man. And my dad has yeah, been but... around for half my life. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Uh... What's with y'all and your daddy issues? Team daddy yeah. issues. <laughs> Team daddy. Man, I don't have daddy issues. My, 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 my dad was there half my life, man. <laughs> nah, man. Yeah, I'm, well, my father was present, too. He's just dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's just dead. Your yes, your heavenly a... father, though. <laughs> yeah, I have like three fathers, but they're all okay, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. god. There you go. There you go. Okay, so I think this is a good place to stop. So Dante got his information and conversation with Lady Saharal, and Rare knows what he needs to do to get attention and to get more power. 
And um, Fatal... Fatal, what did you I discover? I just figured again? out that freaking Dante's ah. grandfather has a freaking necklace. The son bitch. <laughs> no, you don't. That's, that wasn't yes. confirmed. <laughs> It is confirmed! Confirmed! It's my head cannon! I'm just trying to make it happen, you know. That's Ken. That's Ken's head cannon now, dude. And then, and then your grandfather will shout you, Dante, don't do it, I have the high ground! <laughs> oh no. And then Dante oh, shouts me, like, I hate you! And then he shouts. Oh wow. god. That'd be fun. All right. Anyway, yeah, that's what I discovered. Some dude, some man who has a relationship with a demon, with the devils and demons, have the necklace. There you go. And then Rico knows what to do for the illithids, and also knows about the mythalar. Alrighty. Okay. I like, we're, I like that we're taking a break right after all of those bombshells. Okay, guys. Yeah. Everybody enjoy your lunch, and we'll reconvene at 1.02. Hey. Okay. Thank Bye. you, thank you. Bye. Alrighty, everyone. Bye. See you later. Bye. Uh, where we left off was everyone was camping, right? In Lady Saharel's, like at the out on the outside of Lady Saharel's, um, her ruined castle. Yeah. So it's the next day now. <laughs> Let's put a date. It's like 30 plus days after. So it's somewhere around the neighborhood of the 25th of the next month. And of Tarsak? Yeah, of Tarsak. <laughs> that, means, that means I celebrated like Rico's birthday in the desert. It's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, dude, like, uh, you're celebrating it with all these people, with the newfound allies as well, the Illithids. They have no concept of what birthdays are, but they celebrate it anyway. I'm just like, I just explained to them, like, you celebrate that you were born. That's what I... <laughs> <laughs> and then on their end, they're like, huh, I don't even recall when I was born. <laughs> no. Oh man. So anyways, there's that. And then let's see. Okay, so now you head on over to um the place that Lady Saharel told you to go. Which is what was it? Sin Lenal. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So that's closer towards like the heart of Anal Rock. Like the dead center ish. I have a question. I just wanted to clarify something because the the Illithids told me like a shard is enough to make a, an entire like ship fly, right? When uh, like once the shard is used to power a flying ship, is that like all it can do already? The shard like cannot can the shard just like make things fly? Is that all it can be capable of once we? Once we use it or something like, is it programmed forever to make ships fly? I mean, who are you asking that to? Uh, to you, the DM, because like me as the player, I assume like that's all the shard can do. You know, like I want it. Story, to... there's no way that you could know this unless you ask someone who knows it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean. You haven't left yet, I think. I yeah, mean, is you it... have one last chance to ask Sahara. Yeah, is it too late to ask her that? <laughs> sure, you can ask her that. Yeah, I, I ask her, you know, like, will the shard be, you know, used up or something? Or, or is this one shard still capable of powering, like, a bunch of weapons? I still want to know, like, the full implications of, like, just having one shard without, of, like, a Mithalar. She says that it can be used for all sorts of things because that's what it was for back in the Netherese Empire when it was still very much in its golden age so they she said that she says that um, what do you call this it can create quasi magical items yeah so yeah like it can enchant weapons and stuff while it's within range it's of the moon. sphere yeah. yeah within range of the sphere or the shard and but then 
but then if the shard is but if it's a shard that means it has limitations right it's not like one shard can power a lot of quasi magical items for a whole battalion right like it's it not that big we could oh if shit. it's only if its power is only like you know specifically for enchanting weapons even if it's like the shard is the size of like my thumb or something <laughs> It's the size of your thumb. Maybe a very small area. <laughs> like, if it's oh. the size of your thumb, you can okay. power a bunch of items within maybe, say, 30 feet of you, if it's the size of your thumb. Ah, there we go. And then... I've actually... I actually just remembered another question. Um, okay. Uh, I take out, like, my Redeemer sword, and... I explained to Lady Sarel this this sword is actually sentient. It has a copy of the Red Knight inside it. I, I wanted to ask Lady Sarel, is there a way perhaps that we could... Uh, do you know of a way we could strengthen the power of the sword or maybe... Or maybe give, like, somehow, like, you know... Uh, like free the spirit of Redeemer from the sword if if she wishes. Like the the Lady Sarel know of a way. To free the spirit of the sword. Yeah. That will take that will take a ritual of some kind and lots of magical power because it took a lot of magical power to bind her in there in the first place. True. Yeah. So she says that she does not really know of a concrete way, but there are ways to do that. I see. Okay. Okay. One I just... of the ways involves being able to cast a wish, also. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So All right. That. And then the other question you're asking about how to power her up. Yeah. She says that um, Redeemer will power up um, if you... How do I say this? Uh, if the user himself also powers up, and also if you feed souls to her. Oh, okay. Yeah, although you've never done that before, because Redeemer never asks to be fed souls. That's true. Okay. I ask, I ask Redeemer, does that sound good to you? She says, she just says, whatever you wish, mistress. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I, I thank Lady Sarel again, and I tell her, like, if I have enough time, I can send some followers to help me repair some of the castle. I don't know when, but I'll do my best. Okay. She has time. She's mm -hmm. just a ghost after all. Yeah. Alrighty. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got some last minute questions for Lady Saharel? Maybe the secrets of the multiverse or something. I don't know, man. <laughs> we asked her for spoilers. <laughs> oh, sure. I got, not I got nothing, man. Okay. Alright, in that case, we are heading on to the desert. So, okay. Um, the dragon, every now and then, you see Elec flying around. It kind of feels almost like as though he's keeping an eye on you all. Mm. Yeah. And then, you know, every now and then, he also just gets out of sight so that none of you can see him. It kind of puts everyone in the caravan on their toes, especially the non-combatants and the kids. Some mm -hmm. of the kids are strangely drawn to the blue dragon, though. They're just like, whoa, it's a blue dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like typical kid stuff. Um, so eventually you get to the place. This looks like what Lady Saharel described us. Um, as the tomb or Sinlanal. 
Okay. And um, at this point, the Illithids kind of like don't want to enter in there because um, okay. it's at this point that. Cephalos tells you that the Thalud and the Illithid don't have a very good history. And he's kind of like jokingly says, but that's true for most creatures. Right. Then I take it we will be parting ways here now. We will be awaiting for you outside in the ah. car. Okay. Okay. Then... I'll do my best to send you. I'm not sure if I can. If I find a way, I will communicate and tell you we're on our way. Hmm. He thinks for a bit. Hold on. I have to check the Mind Flayer's telepathy range real quick. Maybe you can telepathically keep a line up with you. Or, I mean, one of you guys have a way of doing that also. Hmm, let me check. See, search class. Mm. No, that's not it. I'm searching monsters. Mind Flayer. Can he? Can he? How far? 120 feet. <laughs> he says you can communicate with you up to 120 feet. He's yeah. not sure how far down or up or wherever you're gonna go. Uh, Dante's, uh... Dante will just cast. Uh, Rari's telepathic bond. Okay, you have enough time to cast it as a ritual, so no yep. problem there. Yep. All right. So okay. for one hour, all of you can telepathically communicate. So I know that that's the four of you. Will mm -hmm. you also be targeting the other four illithids? Uh... Or just Cephalos? Maybe just Cephalosk, he can still speak with the other Elithids through telepathy. Yeah, just Cephalosk and then maybe one or two of the like more capable people in the caravan. Okay, no problem. There are a couple of capable folks there. Like one of them's a ranger, the other one's kind of like a druid. Yeah, that's so right. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty, okay, so... That's two people. Maybe take a note of that somewhere, somebody. <laughs> but, you know, these are the people who have the telepathic bond at the moment. Yeah. So, okay. And then you start dungeon delving. And there's not really like a whole bunch of dungeon crawling things to do here. It's a pretty straightforward, like you explore a bit and then uh, let's see, you kind of find a couple of treasures here and there, which I will Ooh. be noting at the end of the session, so don't worry Ooh. about that. There are a couple of traps here and there, but then I think that we don't have to roleplay that. You're at the level where traps are kind of like just a small hindrance. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, um, I want to discuss that like through the telepathic bond, like, I tell them apparently... Like the Asaral said that a whole a huge Mythalar is here, not just a shard. Yeah, and, uh, a huge. That's been... I have some thoughts here. I don't need the whole Mythalar shard. I need. I don't need the whole Mythalar. I just need a shard, power up a flying ship. And uh, I'm not comfortable with leaving a huge Mythalar lying around. So. Do any of you know how to destroy a huge Mythalar? <laughs> <laughs> you knew how, dude. I, I have no idea how. Hmm. Okay. We can take pieces for ourselves. <laughs> I mean, that's the plan, but, yeah. you know, we can't just leave the whole, the big, on, you know, the big piece lying somewhere. Here. Mm. We'll hide it. Okay. We'll hide it. We'll bury it if we have to. We'll bury it if we have to. Okay. Uh, as a DM, I'm not sure what your plan is for that, but okay. Yeah. You're gonna hide it somehow. Okay. okay. Yeah, so you continue onwards. And let's see here. Okay. At 
me load up the map. So here we go. Fucking straight. There you go, Albert map. So the deeper and deeper you go, you start to feel more and more chilly. Like as though like you've been used to the desert being hot and during the night it's kind of like freezing temperatures, so that makes sense. That's how deserts work. But then over here it's it feels like it's really icy and the wow. deeper you go the more and more ice you see. Wow. What? Wow. Why? <laughs> yeah, why indeed. <laughs> why indeed. What is wrong with this place? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, to the players, this is because I can find one with like a sand floor. Oh. Yeah. Okay, pretty cool. Magic and shit. Yeah. Magic. I know, yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks to Tiho X Maps and Evan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Alrighty. Um, you all can station yourself on the east side. Ah, the east. So right here. Okay. Yeah, it's a huge map. Oh shit! Uh, I didn't. I didn't right. it's so. huge. I just turned on my computer. It is big. It is and indeed. That's big. what she said. What the hell? That's <laughs> big. That's bigger. <laughs> oh, that's my boy. Bigger. Oh, yeah. It's bigger. Oh, I didn't turn on my computer. It's the tomb tappers. Yeah, those are huge. It's a tomb huge. huge. The tomb of huge. They're huge. Huge, huge. They're huge. Like, let me they're... let me disconnect yeah. here for a sec. Oh wait, no, I don't have to do that. Let me see. So you're not in combat yet, but you do notice that as soon as you reach this part of the of the ruined city, you can see that there are four really weird looking things. I'll put the picture here actually so that you can get a better view. Or did I delete it? Oh man, I hope I didn't delete it. Hold on. D and D session. I'm wondering if I should cast Shield of Faith now. <laughs> I mean, you certainly could. <laughs> Just one minute? Oh, ten minutes. Oh, well, yeah. uh... We'll see, let's try to talk with... Let's try to talk with these people, with these guys first. Oh, I can't find it anymore. I'm not sure if I deleted the picture. But anyways, that's what they look like. So as you can see, there's like a mouth in the middle and they look like they're rocky figures holding one big-ass hammer. And for you, Rico, who has seen a lot of minerals in his line of work, you've never seen this kind of mineral. It ain't adamantine, and it ain't steel. Oh! Yeah. It's vibranium. It's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... <laughs> vibranium. Yeah. Although it does uh, have the... It does look like a dark-colored kind of substance, though. Oh. It's void metal. <laughs> <laughs> it's void metal. That sounds like such a metal metal dude. Yeah. <laughs> <Can't even. laughs> oh, uh, fatal. I don't see fatal's token. Dude, can you put your token in there? I think I have it. Fatal, are you there, bro? You're on mute, by the way. Fatal. Fatal flaw. <laughs> Hello. Yo, there you are. Yo, my dude, can you put your token in there? Okay, there you are. Oh, put it in there. Alright. This is a huge map, I just realized. 50 by 50 is so big. Are this things huge? The, the, yeah. the thing standing? So it makes sense that, you know, the map is huge. Yeah. But dude, they're three times your size. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, them right now, they're just standing in place. They have registered your presence. Although, from what you can tell, they don't have eyes or ears for that matter, but they still register your presence. Okay. Uh, I tell the rest of the guys, like, 
I'm gonna I'm going to hail them out loud. Um, wait, wait, you wanna hail those things? Yeah, we're I wanna try talking to them and negotiating with them. We don't have to fight over this, you know. Go for it. Okay. But I'm prepared. <laughs> Go for it, but I'm prepared. Alright, mm -hmm. so what do you say to one of them? I, I just which say, one in particular? Uh, um, the I will... this guy, this dude. Oh. Okay. Alright, so you speak to him, I guess. You're not Hello. sure if you share any languages. <laughs> Does he understand common? <laughs> Hold on, so you try saying hello? Yeah, hello! Mm, no response, he doesn't even flinch, but he's registering your presence because his body is very much facing your direction. Okay. Um... I tell him, I am I'm here because I have intentions of taking a shard of the Mythalar. <gasps> the shard of the Mythalar. Just the thumb, just the size of a thumb. I'm hoping. <laughs> just the size of a thumb. Okay. Mm. Okay, hold on, let me see. Okay. So, in your mind, Rico, you hear it say, or well, it doesn't say anything. Yeah. No, wait. No, it does have a language. So, it's in a language you don't understand. It's replying to you. <laughs> it sounds, oh. Yeah. Okay. Sounds really ancient kind of language. Hold on. Uh, I will cast Comprehend Languages on myself. And then I tell him, uh, I apologize. Could you please repeat that? I am not well versed in the ancient tongues. I just enchanted myself to myself understand you. Is it a specific okay. language or is it like no language at all? Like from it is a specific language, yeah, but the it's not the language that's familiar to most of you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, there's no way that you would know this language, is what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, now with Rico with Comprehend Languages, he repeats himself. We do not allow anyone to take a piece of this Mythalar. Okay. May I ask, who is it that charged you with this, uh, with this duty? He replies, We were born to do this duty, and we will die doing so. Okay. Um, I ask him, has there been other people who are after the Mythalar recently? Recently, huh? He says, the last time that someone was after this was a century ago, and no one has disturbed us ever since you today. A century ago, you say? May I but ask... Just to, just to clarify, you casted tongues, right? I casted uh, company languages. Oh, okay. But you can speak their language? They can understand right. common. Ah, he's not speaking there. Ah, they can understand common. Okay. Common, and they understand it, and then they're responding to me in another okay. language. Not comprehend this. Okay. So they understand common, but they don't know how. To, they're not speaking common to you. Mm. Yeah. Ah, okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. Uh, and then I tell him, the person who tried to steal this a century ago. Do you remember him? Is he dangerous? The person who tried to steal it a hundred years ago, huh? Mm, he says, Ah, that one was not a threat to us. He is no longer with us in this plane. I see. And did you say in this plane? Indeed. Huh. Okay. I, I explained to the others, like, Whoever tried to steal this a hundred years ago, they plane they escaped to another plane apparently. Or somebody did that. Okay. Um 
what has there been um the reason I'm here is because I wanted to confirm the Mithor's presence here. And I also have intentions of taking one, but also ensuring that no one else can take it. The, what I'm trying to ask uh, Guardians is, has there been any intruders here who almost succeeded in taking it from you? I want to know if you were... You had any difficulties with your duty? Mm, they say... I mean, they kind of repeat what they were saying a while ago. No one has tried to intrude here ever since a hundred years ago. And for the most part, they've been repelling people from here for centuries on end. There were a couple more that happened a century like a century and a half ago like there were several skirmishes but it kind of ended okay okay and then to answer your other question it says that no one will be allowed to take this shard not even you okay mm. <laughs> Uh, I tell my party members, I don't want to fight these people, but I want to also make sure they're fully capable of protecting the Smith Alar, you know? What? what do you think? They've been here for more than 100 years, Red Knight. What makes you ask that they're not capable of defending it? I mean, you don't know what, what else could come here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they've been doing their job pretty well. Yeah, that's true. If you uh, seek to just keep it safe, this there's no one else that'll be able to do it than them. That is true. Seems they've proven themselves. I wanted to make sure... I wanted to come here to ensure that they are still here, actually. And that no one has... You know... Taking a piece of think, it or anything. If you think for safety of this place, then bring some people here. Protect the outside paths. But leave leave these things to protect what they are destined to protect. Yeah, you're right. Okay. It seems like we won't be able to get one without a fight, and I don't want to fight these people. I will stand down and I guess we'll have to make do with the treasures we found along the way. Hmm. So, yeah. uh, what do you all want to do? Anyone else want to talk to them? Yeah. Uh, I'm chill, yo. I think they've done their job pretty well, and I have no interest with the shard, so. Yeah. I don't know what I'll do with a shard. <laughs> I have no interest in it. Dante, my plan uh, was either I was because my plan was you know maybe someone came here killed the tomb tappers and you know like I was gonna destroy the shard and take some or you know like if they're still here and they're doing it seem to be doing a great job it's like oh, okay then I'll leave you know <laughs> <laughs> I like how yeah, casual you are man very agreeable yeah they they've they've been here for quite some time being a yeah. man of tradition I think Fatal would agree that they've done their job pretty well. That's true. It's true. But it doesn't hurt to have some people outside protecting it. That is also true. But this place is... Is this place inhospitable, like, based on our, like, uh, exploration here? Or... When you say inhospitable, you're referring to, like, humanoids that need to eat and drink food, right? Yeah, and, like, sleep and relieve oh, okay. themselves and, yeah. You know, like, would the guards be comfy if they were doing their duties here outside? Maybe if in the you borders? Were the station guards? Uh, no. Yeah, in the borders <laughs> of this place? No. How about the borders of this place, like, before entering it, like, outside, or like, That's yeah, the, the near borders of it? The That's near true. borders of it, it's also mostly sand and ruined stuff. Uh, so you have to send supplies and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, you would have to constantly have caravans sending supplies to the guards. Yeah. Not exactly That's the most feasible thing. However, you can create a permanent teleportation circle. 
Yep. So there you go. You can have that. If you're really take worried. a long time, though, yeah. Yeah. If you're really worried, then you have that going for you. That's true. Dante speaks up and Dante says that he wants to keep this place hidden. By posting guards on outside, we call attention to the location. That's true. Uh, I'll ask the... Dan Dante oh, will con continue speaking and he will address the guardians now. He will say, guardians, uh, your duty is to protect this 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 mythalar yes dante will say there are many forces at work outside that you may or may not be aware of forces that seek this power one of them is very close it is an ancient blue dragon are yeah. you aware of their presence they kind of like look at each other and they say Yes, we are aware of that one, but he would not dare come here, for there are many I mean, of us, and there's only he, one of him. Yeah, I mean, he, he should have done that already if he's given the power, not asked us to do it. But, he's, um, but he's so massive, can he even fit in this case, in this system? <laughs> I don't know about that. Like, he, I mean, he could polymorph to, you know, the smaller being, right? But anyway, mm -hmm. logistic-wise, you know, it's like, it's too big. <laughs> Dante or will... Should have tried it, or it should have tried it a couple of years ago already. Yeah. Dante will continue and he will say, uh, Irregardless of this, there are still many other forces there. And what I am suggesting is perhaps we can do this favor for you. Eliminate this dragon and in return... Allow us to leave this place with a tiny piece of the Mithalar. Ooh. Well, you say that, but it says we would thank you for taking care of the dragon. However, it is our duty to protect the Mithalar. Yeah, that is understandable. They act like AI, you know, they act like computers. Yeah. yeah, basically they yeah. are like that. They're programmed yeah, they, to they, do they, one they. thing and one thing only. Yeah, if you do that, they'll, they'll disappear from existence. You know, if you fail it. They just like, they got to just break down. Even if you, if, even if you put it logically, they will encounter an error. Syntax <laughs> <laughs> error, 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 error. <laughs> Cannot yeah. comprehend. Cannot, Cannot compute. compute. But it is, if, if it, that's actually a good like deal, to be honest, but like, they are kind of like, from what I'm getting, they're like AIs. They're like constructs yeah. with like one purpose. Yeah. yeah. Lady Sarrell, they tell you that mm. this. But hey, I don't they, mind. They worship it like a god, so it's like they're yeah. not going to give up their god so easily. Yeah. But hey, I don't mind. I don't mind killing a dragon just for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Dante will say, in that case, I commend your resilience and your determination. I believe yeah. this Mithalar will be well protected under your care. I can respect that as well. Is there, um, would you be against the idea of us making this place hidden from future travelers, guardians, or, or do you have issue with that? He doesn't really have a response for that per se. He says, do whatever you wish. We will continue to protect the Mithalar. Okay. 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 I guess that's. I guess that's it. That yeah. was, um Dante turns around and leaves. Yeah. Let's huh? let's go. Bye, I, guys. Or, <laughs> bye, guys. Or before before I leave, I kneel before these ancient beings, truly respecting their um. They're bounded tradition, and there's not, I don't think there's any other beings out there with such a great purpose to, like, never move away from this thing, and that, 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 that just inspires me. So I, yeah. I kneel before them before I leave in full wow. and, and pure reverence and respect towards their, uh, their undying belief towards this middle art thing, you know? Oh yeah, man. It's like, it's what a cleric ought to be, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, they be a cleric that respects tradition and law. Exactly, dude. I, uh, <laughs> Fenrir will just say, 
Well, it was either them or the dragon. The dragon it is then. No, 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 brother Fenry. We have we have no quarrel with the dragon. <laughs> Although we're we're leaving here without. Oh no! Yeah, as yeah, as 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 Dante as Dante as Dante walks out, Dante will say, "This was always going to happen. I was just delaying the inevitable." Yeah. Um, before we before we leave as well, I just tell the guardians like, "May Tempus bless you all for, with on your future battles and defending the Mythalar. And then I just leave. Okay. Uh, look at I look at everyone else. So, uh, what are the chances of the dragon having a short middle arm? If he had the shard, he wouldn't be asking us. Well, he was <laughs> to, to, to be fair. He was asking us for the entire thing. <laughs> oh well, I, oh, I to be honest, I am I am a bit apprehensive of fighting a gargantuan blue dragon. <laughs> I'm not at that level yet. I mean, I know there are two demigods here, but still. Red, Red Knight, aren't you a god of some sort? Why do you mean some dragon? I'm inside a mortal body, and I also have a wife and child to look after. <laughs> well, you should well, 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 retire well. now. <laughs> but <laughs> retire now and uh, set up your family. That's no, there, are other, there are other things to do, you know, besides parenting. There's so other the... things to do besides parenting. So what is the plan now? <laughs> Uh, Y'all are kind of like walking and talking on the way out of this yes. area now, yep. I think. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Okay. Are. Uh, I, I tell them like, well, the mind flayers are still here. Maybe while we battle it, we can, you know, weaken it to the point that the mind flayers could spam their domination abilities on it. I don't know. And the, then the we can, we can make the dragon kill itself, I think. Yes. Maybe. yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> That sounds like an awesome, po awesome post plan, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. So I, I, I just asked for the general plan. We're gonna go kill the dragon, and then what after we kill the dragon? Mm, we could take its hide, I guess. I don't know. Because the thing is, it will never let us leave without without the fight. Yeah, or without us fulfilling yeah. what it said we should do. And if we somehow leave the desert, it might just come find us, and we should we might just draw a huge dragon into our homes. So yes. We could just kill it. Like. I have a feeling that dragon has been terrorizing the the desert and its inhabitants for a while now, and that does not sit well with me. Yeah. yeah. And maybe the elephants could harvest its soul for you know whatever they need. Oh wow, that's pretty nice. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's go for it. I guess let's kill him. Fenrir mm. <laughs> just thinks like to himself, simple. "The dragon seems to be a very yeah. powerful foe." Yeah, mm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, that's all he's thinking. Yeah, <laughs> that's all he's thinking. That's all he needs to know, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right, so I would say it's about it's about the point where you're almost at the entrance of like the place. You're kind of like exiting it now, but then like all of a sudden you hear kind of like a big whooshing sound, kind of like as though somebody is. You're kind of familiar with the sound when people are teleporting. Oh yeah, so, yeah, you hear. A yeah. How many stories are we talking about? Oh, it sounds like a lot. It's pretty oh, deafening shit. how many. What? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. And then, like, a shortly after you hear that, you hear what seems like a battle raging on. Oh. It sounds like a really fierce battle. The sound oh. of cracks, it seems to be coming from within within Sinlinal. Oh, dang. Shit. Okay. Yeah. I we rushed toward rush. the general location. Yeah. Yeah. Dante runs too. And I fly there to the <laughs> location. Alrighty. Okay. So, um, still looking at the map, 
So, I mean, that can be your same starting position. But now, all of a sudden, you see here, I'm going to be drawing it out. Uh, it's going to be a rectangle. Here we go. Oh, wait, the mythlar is not there, right? We're just using this map. Oh, no, that is the mythlar, the one in yeah, the... Yeah, because that's where there. they came from. I think that's where they came from. They teleported <laughs> here. Yeah. So this oh. is the middle R, and then yeah, so middle R. when you come back, you're in the same positions, and it's a really dire sight. So there's this dude over here in the corner, if you can see. Mm. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Who oh wasn't God. there before? You don't know how oh. he got there. He looks devil as fuck, y'all. He's more <laughs> metal than I am. Looks what more metal fuck? than you. <laughs> metal. Yeah. metal. And then over here, you see in purple and pink and white hues, it looks like a planar gate. What? And, and coming out of it is like demons. It's like a legion of demons. What? I'm not going to be putting them all here, but right now the, guard, the guardians, the Thaluts, they're fighting these demons as much as they can. But it Ice. doesn't look like it's going to be long until they're taken down. I scream, protect the middle or and then charge. <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, <laughs> I think we can start I the will, next I session. Will cast, I will cast Shield well, of Fame. <laughs> you will cast yeah. what? Shield of Fame. <laughs> okay, you're gonna cast spell before we start. Well, we can do that next time, right? Because we're... Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll end the session a little early, like, it's a little less than three and a half hours this time around. I'm already there, yes. yeah. Yeah, because the next session is going to be a very intense combat. Wow. <laughs> nice. There it is, there's, a, very there's a spell. E. That's how Shield of Faith looks? That's so dope. Uh, I mean, it is under the Wait, sorry. He's gonna make it smaller. Yeah. Ah, okay. But I can't seem to click it. Oh, wait. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm pretty oh, sure y'all would have been casting your buffs before you got there, because yeah. you hear a battle raging on. Yeah, can we do that? So, uh, yeah. I have yes. No problem with that. Fuck Everybody yeah. has their buffs ready. Do I want to bless everyone, or do I want to storm sphere everyone? I don't know. That's up to you, dude. <laughs> we'll think about that. It's like, anyway, bless us. We'll think about that in the next session. Yeah. yeah, we'll think about that. Before, yeah, no, uh, Dante has to cast his, like, their image blur thingy. I mean, not blur, blink, right? Yeah. By the way, just to give you, like, um, some hype for what you might be facing off. So you see this thing over here. Oh. You What's that? See this She's sexy. She's sexy. She's sexy. <laughs> Is that, like, a snake? She looks like a snake. Oh, she has a snake tail. Ooh, nasty. Yo, yeah. what is this? Yeah. <laughs> what is this? What's the other one down here? What the fuck is that? Wow. By the way, Ron, no. you're okay with this image, are you? Like, I need to make sure. Yeah, are it's you okay fine. With that? This one's fine, uh, yeah. I know that race, but I don't know the same race that's in my mind. The snake lady. She's like a, like a Yuan-Ti, but with six yeah. arms. Yeah, you have to with six arms, you know? A Yuan tie with six arms. I don't know what's the, what's the one on the underneath her, though. But it looks like a demon or a devil, I'm not sure. I'm crazy. That's it. Like a it's mix a between a scorpion and a werewolf mm. and a minotaur. minotaur. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Why can't we have a chimera for once, you know? Why do we always have this complicated... Why do we have this complicated beings all the time? <laughs> You know, there was a time oh, when dude. chimeras are the complicated ones. Now we have like, what the f- what, what is that? <laughs> All it's like is wings, you know? Should have wings. Can I say, man? I like to throw some weird ass shit monsters at y'all. <laughs> yeah. Who's this? Okay, this- this guy... Uh... Teleported here, or... Did he the sneak in through- thingy. Did he sneak in after us? You'll never know. Know. And open we the portal from the inside. I feel like that's what he did. We can beat the shit out of him and ask him how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> we can beat the shit out of him and then ask. Ah, okay, before the session ends, the area. Rico, you remember mm. this person? What? This is, 
This is the elf, the same elf that you met long ago. Oh, for the love of... Okay. <laughs> Which elf? Ah, uh, this guy? The black armored guy? Yeah, the black armored yeah. guy who was a former follower of mine when I was still the Red Knight. Ugh. Oh. oh. And, so is uh, a god too? <laughs> no, he's not. And, um, in oh. your case, in your case, um, Fatal, you see something on his neck. You think it can't be. <gasps> oh, no. oh, snap. Oh, no, it's his oh, grandfather. That's his grandfather, dude. Not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, that's his grandfather. That's his grandfather. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, no, no, oh God, no, he's no. the same person. Oh no. They're I mean, they're not. Elven ears. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nobody ears. never know, man. You know, grandfather. Is this N? Thing, you know, uh, oh, no. Is this N DM? Um no, you don't think oh. it's N. Okay, okay, it's oh, not. Oh yeah, N. we can we can all speculate until the next session. I'm yeah. just wondering if grandfather. <laughs> we need to uh, pull a job and this guy should be Dante's grandfather or not? <laughs> Is he Dante's grandfather? Is he M? Viewers, oh, get a poll right there, you know. We need a poll. <laughs> Find out next time on Plucking on Strings. Plucking Strings. Or maybe it's one of these giant things, your grandfather. You know, the one Actually, it's uh, the, 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 the snake lady with the six arms is my grandfather. Oh, that's your grandfather? <laughs> 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 Dude, like I swear to God, I want to be your grandfather at some point. Like, <laughs> I'm just thinking, it's like, oh, it's just the player thinking, not Fatal. Though Fatal's too stupid to figure that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a couple of expectations for next session. So the tomb tappers, also known as the Thaluts. And um, all of the other demons, there's like hundreds of them, so... They'll you know, be fighting like, each other not... in a separate battle. Yeah, they're gonna be fighting each other in a separate battle. Mm. You all will be kind of like in this space over here, so hold on, let me just delete all of the figures that aren't going to be in your battle. We're just there gonna go. fight um, these three people, um, Charlie's Devils, you know, just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Charlie's, the Charlie's Devils, yeah. Yeah. These devils. However, depending on what happens, they might call in for reinforcements. So just keep that in mind. Now be like, Shh, no, don't do that. <laughs> this <laughs> this portal is there thing. Way you can the portal? Yeah, I, I, yeah, my question. Uh, what? Can you say that again? Can we go, no, Dante? Say can it. we disable the portal? Like, do we? Does Dante think that the the guy in the black armor is concentrating on the spell? To keep it open, or is there a device near the portal that is keeping it open? What's what's happening? Yeah, what's so? I mean, to make you not waste any actions, shortly after you get there, the portal closes. It seems ah. like it was out of time. Okay, so they, I guess you'll have to cast another portal spell or something, or get reinforcements from the one fighting the Talud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you don't know. have... We can remove that, whoever put the dice symbol there. It's not there anymore. Yeah, However, you don't that. know if he can cast it again, or if somebody here can cast it again, or mm, do anything yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anything's possible. He just Thanos us, to be honest. <laughs> you know, the, the yeah, Infinity he War might, portal thing. Yeah. He bided his time, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, it will take some time before you get back here. We Damn it, Dante's so mad. I bet we led them to to this place. Maybe. <laughs> so maybe, angry. Maybe. If you think about it, if we had killed those six, we would have been fighting all of the hundred stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you know. Damn it. Also, I have the, that. the simplest Dude. part. The simplest part. If we didn't kill so the angry. Uh, defender. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, no, cause like, I've been up. like I've been like apprehensive and like doubting this whole plan to come to look for the Mithilar in the first place because I was afraid I something like this would this. happen. I don't even know what we're doing. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> we we're like we were just gonna check it out. I was like, wait, yeah. dude, that's it. That's what we're doing. Now. We're just gonna check it out. <laughs> oh, he wanted to get a piece of it. Yeah. That's the good. Yeah, yeah, that's, the, that's the general part. Was yeah, just shrugging the whole time, like, <laughs> okay, let's do it. Is it, is it, is it we're wait, gonna so do like, that. Okay. 
<laughs> so in my mind, it was like, yeah, we're getting a shard. And then all of a sudden, the Red Knight is like, yeah, okay, we respect you. We're not going to take it from you. It's like, okay, yeah. It's like, wait, so okay. <laughs> but uh, it's understandable. I respect that from the Red Knight, that he respected these creatures, you know? And I respect uh, that. But like at the so same time, yeah, we could have... Gone, dude. I was wondering if you guys would fight them. But then again, I was thinking, that doesn't sound like you guys. Yeah, maybe yeah. not. But yeah, th there's also the fact that Wayne said that we could have brought them here, which I, I have a feeling we did, in a way. Or, you know, we just got lucky and they came here and we were here too, you know? <laughs> yo, 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 listen. Listen, we haven't said to make active perception checks. Yeah. But I have a problem. <laughs> we that's have a, a problem. <laughs> that's the that's thing, though. The they have to make stealth checks around us, and I have, like, a really high passive, so I don't At least that one guy who summoned the portal, and that's it. Yeah. But that's, like, a super sneaky, like, he has a greater invisibility spell or something. Yeah. So I would have been rolling, like, 40s at that point. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, you know, it's just, we got panels, bro. Yeah, this hype. Uh, next session is gonna be ko ano no in uh, the the middle. Is it is the middle one? Yeah, yeah the interlude. it's the interlude. So okay. I promise that this is going to be a high intensity battle. It's going oh, yeah. to be pretty fucking dope. Okay. Yeah. All sorts of things are gonna happen. Freaking and dope together, like well, two of my best words combined. <laughs> I have a question. When when Sina can join us, like, will she be here? Like, what's the? Oh, apparently she won't be around next week. Also. Oh, oh no. Okay. okay. Yeah. Shit. I mean, I was sad to hear that as well. But then, like, you know, life happens. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's true. Yeah. At the very least, she can see what we were up to. You know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, can I also activate my Twilight Sanctuary? Because <laughs> a lot of Before shit is happening here. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, I'll say that you... Whatever buffs you all wanted to cast oh, on the yeah. route. Because you know that the battle was happening. Yeah, yeah we're yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah, Basically, what buffs. Fenrir <laughs> said is... Uh, what was that? With the... By the power of frost and flame, I have the power! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh shit! Battle nice. cry time! My, my intro, my intro on the next session is going to be thunder snapping in front of him and shout, BRING ME TUNNELS! <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's God, the shout there. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna cast aid on the fourth level for, um, the oh, three of you guys. Uh -huh, yeah, okay. nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Right, okay. I was like wondering I mean, why sure I only have like 116 HP. Make sure you yeah. take note of all of the buffs you're casting so that mm -hmm. you know right off the bat for next session. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, maybe not just put it on Albert because I'll try to save the link, but then sometimes when I save the link, it still disappears anyway. So, oh, yeah. It I'll does. put yeah. mine on trackers long so that just to make sure. Okay. Do that. So go ahead and note it down in trackers what buffs everybody has. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, don't know that. I don't think we rolled dice today. No, I didn't. We didn't. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> we were just interacting. The full whole time was just. Was full just RP. Interaction. Yeah. Full yeah. RP. Nice. I mean, there could have been dice rolls if you fought the dragon. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I was I was waiting for that, but the plan the plan was there, so I was like, I'll take it. I'll go. just cast the the long in the no. Shield of uh, Shield of Faith. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, Wayne, if you've yep. ended the episode, or if you haven't yet, you can end it, now, man. Okay. Very I'm good. ended. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry for that. Thank you so much for watching Plucking Strings. That was episode th four, I believe. Uh, that's it. Uh, today was a roleplay heavy session. Uh, next session is going to be this big fight. So hype for that. Going to fight this guy. Uh, and this, this, this snake lady with six arms. That's pretty cool. And this guy who's been annoying our party since the first season uh 
so excited to see what he what his deal is and uh see what happens uh that's it thank you again last last last, last thank you again so much for watching and uh see you all next time that's it bye bye take care be safe peace